You're watching Sun Belt Conference football on ESPN. The world famous Budweiser Clydesdales prance their way into Statesboro, Georgia, as the Georgia Southern Eagles host the Marshall Thundering Herd on ESPN. We thank you for joining us alongside Cole Neely and Emily Grace McWhorter. I'm Danny Wall. While both teams are unable to compete for a Sun Belt Conference championship with Coastal Carolina winning the East Cole, there is still a lot to play for tonight. What's at stake for both teams? Well, Danny, for both of these teams, all right, they have a chance to compete for a bowl, all right? That's the biggest thing that they have. When you're able to play with the team, the band of brothers that you have, you want to be able to finish out the season with them, go into postseason play. So this is going to be a very big moment for them. It's also going to be a cold one in Statesboro tonight, and our own sideline reporter, Emily Grace McWhorter, has more. Finally feels like states like November in Statesboro. Excuse me. It's a little cold. I'm clearly dressed for the elements as you can see. So pregame I went up to Marshall's head coach Charles Huff. And I said coach I feel a little silly. I'm this bone up. You guys just like you look like you're hanging out. They came from snow and about 20 degree weather Danny. He said it's not very often that we get to enjoy the Georgia weather. So they are enjoying this back to you. Yeah, EG, 52 degrees feels like an October breeze. And you look at our big players on each side for offense. Eagles quarterback Kyle Van Treese leads the Sun Belt in passing yards, while for the herd, running back Kalen Laburn leads the Sun Belt in rushing yards. And we're going to see Laburn early as Marshall gets the opening kick. And already got some chippiness on the field afterwards. Mark Stampley laying out one of the herd returners. And we are going to see four Marshall quarterback Cam Francer, the red shirt freshman who won the starting job midway through the season with the absence of Henry Columbi. But ever since Fancher's taken over, Cole, he's off to a pretty good start. He has been, all right? The, the big thing about Fancher, his ability to run with his legs, I think that's something that's completely underrated about this quarterback. Yes, he's young, a little inexperienced, but he gets better as he's able to throw these quick passes. Then that's something Georgia Southern has to limit early if they want to be able to maintain and handle what this offense can do. Marshall will start from the 25. And a quick pass on the outside is caught to Shadid Ahmed. And he gets across the 30. Taken down the end by the Eagles, Anthony Wilson. We're going to see something about this a lot about this offense. They love to run the RPO. And right now, here they go with the glance routes. They're getting set quick. That's their offense. They want to keep the ball moving fast. Second and four, here's Laburn on the outside. He'll be short of a first down. You look at the rest of the starting lineup for the Thundering Herd. Who stands out for Marshall Cole? Well, of course, besides the running back, Halen Lambert, you can look at Cam Fancher, but you can also look at his offensive line, Ethan Driscoll. All right, got Cedric Palin, Logan Osborne, Dawn Tucker, Kendrick Sar Sartor, excuse me. These are a very talented unit, very good at what they can do. They run the ball very efficiently with a very talented running back. You can kind of really have your way with a defense like Georgia Southern, who isn't that great in the run game. Well, those O-linemen helped labor and get a first down for the hurry. Look at the Eagles defense led by two veterans up front and Justin Ellis and Dylan Springer. Codger Jackson and Marquez Watson train. You can't forget about the DBs led by Derek Canteen. From the 35 on first down, three receivers set for Fancher. Has plenty of time, floats one deep, has an open man, and E.J. Horton, and Horton will prance his way in the end zone for a herd touchdown. What a start for the herd. You, you said it, Danny, what a start. And this offense can be very dangerous. Like we talked about, Cam Fancher, young quarterback, but he has a – he has the ability to have these big plays where he can throw the ball, he can air it out. And honestly, his receivers are going to help him out by beating this Georgia Southern secondary. When they beat the coverages, they find the soft spot in these zones, the guys are going to get wide open. And that's something that Georgia Southern struggled with last week when they played Louisiana. What a start for Marshall. Cam Fancher, 65 yards, but the PAT is missed. Reese Vierhoff got that one off the side. So rather 7-0 and 6-0, but what a start for the Thundering Herd as Fancher found Horton deep downfield for a 65-yard touchdown pass. Well, you can tell Georgia Southern's defense, they're going to be keeping their eye out for the run game, but right now guys are just going to get beat in coverage. They get lost. There's a blown assignment, and then guys are going to find ways to expose these soft coverages and these, these soft spots in the zones. They're going to get open. They're going to be able to score touchdowns. 
So Georgia Southern on defense, they got to find a way to readjust. They need to sit down on the sideline, talk to defensive coordinator Will Harris and figure out what exactly they did do right and how they can prevent another blown coverage like that from happening again. What a start for the herd and head coach Charles Huff wanting to make a statement on the opening drive. Four plays, 75 yards, only a minute 21 off the clock and trying to keep their eligibility for a bowl game consistent with a win here tonight. Well, that's one heck of a way to start off by keeping it consistent and having a, a chance to be bowl eligible. You start with a big, big play, four plays, 75 yards. You get down the field quick, fast, and in a hurry. You can see the urgency they have. This is a team that's really proving that they want to be playing for a postseason game. So just like that, a 6-0 start. And we'll see how Georgia Southern responds. We weren't sure about Marshall's passing game. We were talking about their running game with Kalen Laburn, but we know for Georgia Southern and quarterback Kyle Van Treese, he leads the Sun Belt in passing yards a game, looking to answer back for Georgia Southern. Well, one thing about Van Treese too, Danny, he's a guy that they know that when they have him out there, everything's like the words kind of go away. Has some interceptions throughout this season, but he's reined that turnover margin in. He's gotten a lot better with it, and he's playing some really good football. Didn't throw a pick last week in the loss against Louisiana, 325 yards and a touchdown, but the third downs were a problem for the Eagles, just two of 14 last week. They start from the 25 at the handoff to Jalen White, spins outside and gets to it a 30. And Jalen White having himself a great year. Look at the rest of the Eagles starting lineup. So it's a gain of four for White, second and six. The four receivers set for Van Treese. White again, breaks through the middle. Still going across midfield, taken down to the 40. And that's one way to answer if you're the Eagles, big run from White. So they're starting to change things up. They're gonna go with the run game here to start off. And I think that's a great idea because it looks like they're getting quarters coverage from Marshall's defense. And I think they're expecting for Van Treese to start slinging the rock, getting the ball out there. He said, all right, drop your eight. We're gonna run the ball, okay? We're not worried about that. And so that's what Georgia Southern's doing well. The gain of 29 for the red, for the junior White. From the 42 in Marshall territory, White again. And you could see the Eagles running more here to start because they have a lot of injuries to the receiving court throughout the year. Yeah, you don't want to risk getting another guy banged up. Caleb Hood is the really the man in charge, the guy that's going to be able to help this Georgia Southern offense flourish. He's the senior leadership there. And when it comes to passing for the Eagles, you have to watch out for the DBs for Marshall, led by Stephen Gilmore and Micah Abraham. After a gain of three, Van Treese's first pass is to Marcus Sanders, who barely gets across the 40. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Gonna bring up third down. He nailed it too when you talked about it earlier about receiver, the receivers having an injury there in the receiving core. The injury bug is around. We're gonna see a lot of freshman receivers tonight, and I think that's gonna be a huge thing. Marcus Sanders, one of them from Montezuma, Georgia. So no gain. Third and seven. Van Trees, quick throw, was looking for Hood, incomplete. So after the big runs from Jalen White, the Eagles stopped and the punt team will come out. Unfortunate series for that offense. I know they were kind of looking to get something going, get, at least get something on the board. Would have helped them out. Even if they were able to get a field goal, I think that's huge. This Marshall offense, They've shown a lot of great flashes over the over the season over this season. Had some really big flashes last week against App State. And right now they know they can run the ball well against this Georgia Southern defense. It's gonna be a long night, so they're gonna have to readjust. I'm eager to see what that defense is gonna do when they come back out. Anthony Beck on the punt and the whistle. Play a game for the Eagles, our head referee, Trennis Livingston. So make it fourth and 12. As Beck will punt. Smart penalty to be able to take, help pin Marshall's offense deep in their own territory. 
Stephen Gilmore set to return on the other side for the herd. Fair catch called. And the herd gonna start inside the 10 when we come back from our commercial break. Six nothing start for Marshall here on ESPN Plus. More to come after the break. Six-nothing start for Marshall here on ESPN+. Plus. We welcome you back to Statesboro, Georgia. Emily Grace McWhorter has her keys to the game. Danny, my keys for tonight's game, we'll start things off with Georgia Southern, is to stop the run. This is something they've struggled to do all season, and against a team like Marshall, that's going to be crucial. Also, create turnover opportunities. This is something that defensive coordinator Will Harris preaches game in and game out. Now, for Marshall on the flip side, it's control the tempo of the game. We've already seen them doing that here. So if they can get these things done, Marshall will likely take the win. Back to you. Thanks, CG. And while the Eagles planned on stopping the run, wasn't expecting a deep pass to EJ Horton from Cam Fancher. The herd will start from the eight. And here is Rashid Ali with his first carry of the season. Cole, we were talking with some Marshall personnel earlier before the game. They were surprised that Ali was going to suit up tonight. Well, this is a very accomplished young man. And when you have a stable of running backs that can perform extremely well like him, you, you want to be able to find him, you want to be able to get him in the game. So it's really interesting that he's playing so late in the season. Stays in after an eight-yard gain on second down. Stopped by Kadri Jackson and Marquez Watson Trent. Ali last season rushed for over 1,400 yards and led the nation with 25 touchdowns. Has not played all year until tonight. Will stay out there on third and one for the herd. From the 17, Ali squeezes his way through for a first down. A flag is out at the end. We'll find out what that flag is in a second. But so far, this is what they like to do. They love to run the inside zone. That split inside zone action, that's their bread and butter. They kind of fun, they use that a lot in their offense. The freshman El Hodge fall called for the face mask. And the herd already got a first down. They'll tackle on an extra 15 yards. Gonna put him at the 35. Trips right for Fancher. Charles Montgomery in motion. Play action, quick dump off to Montgomery, and he gets the first down. Cam Fancher, three for three to start here in the opening quarter, Cole. Yep, and they're picking up the tempo, too. So you see the success they're having early. They want to be able to keep the ball going. That's exactly what this offense loves to do. They want to be able to keep having quick plays and keep that success going. Ali on first down, stopped by Canteen at the end, along with Watson Trent and LJ McLeod. That was great penetration right there by the linebackers. And the best way to beat these teams that love to run the ball in zone runs, you got to get penetration and you got to be able to control the gaps. Right there, you saw a beautiful blitz. Saw the linebacker come in hard, come in and make that play through the gap, make a tackle right there in the backfield. And that's something they got to be able to do if they want to be able to handle this, this offense. A loss of one, labored back in a running back. Four receivers for the herd. Fancher. Finds Labor in space. Hurdles over Canteen. What a move. Still going. Near the 25. What an athletic play from Kalen Labor. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, are we going to have another sports center type of play out here in Paulson Stadium? That was a heck of a hurdle right there. All right. We just look at it. So no one's going to cover him. He's alone by himself. All right. One defender comes up trying to make a play. He leaps over him, stays in bounds, keeps those legs going. Where's Coach Huff find these running backs? On play action, first down. Throw is incomplete. Fancher looking for Montgomery. How dangerous does this make the herd now that Rasheen Ali is back tonight along with Labor? 
I'll put it like this, Danny. Ever, ever, ever had like something that was a little bit too spicy for you in terms of food? You know, you eat it, you're going to have to go to the bathroom. That's how dangerous that is. <laughs> Second and 10 from the 25. That was a 30 yard pass. Fancher to Labor. It was all labored on that one. Tied in Devin Miller in motion. Play clock at eight. Pass was just off for Miller. That'll bring up third down. So we talk about how the run game is very important for this offense, right? It sets up the RPO. Georgia Sun is going to have to take away the run game when it's time for those running downs. They want to force Marshall to be in these drop back pass downs. And I think that's something that that's not necessarily the strength of this offense. The herd started from the eight. Now close to the red zone. Third and 10, Fancher, quick throw in the middle is caught. And that's gonna be a first down as Corey Gamage puts the herd in the red zone. And right now Marshall's offense is having their way with that defense. You can tell that guys are a little bit confused on assignments. Eyes aren't where it's supposed to be. Really good twist up front, but it doesn't really get any pressure on the Fancher. And Fancher does a great job dishing the ball out quick. Offense, number 56. 15 yards from the previous spot. Replay third down. Number 94 may remain in the game. So the right tackle, Kendrick Sarter, with hands to the face. So that's going to put the herd back, and we're going to do third down again. And honestly, that was a good penalty for Georgia Southern, but a really bad penalty for Marshall. I understand in the moment, you know, you get in your hands, you're working as an offensive lineman, you're trying to punch a guy in his chest, and sometimes you may miss, you may get get one in the face mask that happens third and 25 from the 40 answer back to pass gonna flip one over has Laburn Laburn has blockers and he gets to the 35 and that brings up fourth down interesting to go with the screen call you saw they start to bring pressure right there on that last play so Really good job by Georgia Southern's defense by closing the ground and making the tackle. And looks like they're going to probably go with the punt team. Well, Reese Vierhoff, the kicker, has not kicked the field goal 50 yards or more. So rather, John McConnell out to punt. And there's nobody back to return for the Eagles. It's a great punt. It is a great punt. It's going to put Georgia Southern inside the five 729 to go in the first quarter how will the eagles respond find out after the break on espn plus we talked about injuries from the eagles receiving core and the eagles lost derwin burgess after last week's loss against louisiana adding on to the list it's an unfortunate loss but you know what you got a lot of young guys that you can depend on and this is the reason why you got depth in this receiver room, okay? You got to let these young guys, you got to let them fly. Like, like what Mark Wahlberg said in the other guys. He's a peacock. You got to <laughs> let me fly. In this case, they're Eagles. You got to let them fly, Danny. Well, let's see how the Eagles will fly starting from their own four. It's a great punt by the herd, John McConnell. Putting the Eagles this far back. And off to Jalen White, up the middle, gets to the 10. And with the absence of numerous receivers for Georgia Southern, it's always next man up at this type of the year. Well, like I said, you got a bunch of young guys that are going to have their shot to show what they can do. You look at Marcus Sanders Jr., freshman. You look at Joshua Thompson, Dalen Cobb, another freshman. You know, Ezra Archie, these are guys that are going to be the future of this program. So you got to see what they can do in high-stakes pressure moments like this. Second and four. White. Oh, great move. Outside across the 30. There he goes. Pushed that at the end. But a big run for Jalen White again. His fifth carry. Just what a run overall for the junior. Well, one, that was a great hole that had opened up, but it looked like he ran out a little steam towards the end. I don't know if that that tiredness kind of got to him. They got to work on that Madden rating. But look at this right here. They go, good kick out block right there. And then Jalen White's off to the races. Gets a little tired, tried to make a move, 
I don't know. Maybe if this was Madden, you got to take that uh, stamina rating down. Well, here's a pass to Jeremy Singleton who gets to the 20. That was a 55-yard run from Jalen White. And after Van Treese's second completion, the Eagles are in the red zone. Exactly what they needed. We haven't seen a big run like this from the, this Eagles offense really all season, and they finally got that. They, they haven't been using the run game as much until really today. A lot of run, running the ball, only two passes or three passes today so far. From the 22, rather. White will keep. And now the Eagles are in the red zone. Jalen White, six carries and over 100 yards rushing in the first quarter. That's pretty incredible. I mean, this is typically how most people describe this Georgia Southern offense now as an air raid offense. Right now, they're running the ball not exactly how they used to do it back in the day, but now they're running it with pretty good efficiency so far. I know Marshall's a little bit taken back by that. Second and six from the 18. Fifth play of the drive for the Eagles. Van Trees, plenty of time in the pocket, has to let it go, out of bounds. Charlie Gray tried to get a hand on it. Bring up third down. This is where the Eagles struggled against Louisiana last week, two for 14, but they're also facing the best third down defense in the country in Marshall. I know one thing, look, offensive coordinator Brian Ellis, he's going to have to dial something up. And you look at really the rushing defense, and we talk about how, how well Georgia Southern came out running the ball. Marshall only allows 82.4 yards a game, and right now Georgia Southern's already past that. Third and six, Van Trees out to Hood. And Hood may be short of a first down. He will be. But the Eagles offense still on the field. It's going to be fourth down and two from the 14. I love Last, no, excuse me. I love this commitment by Coach Helton right here to go for it. The gutsy call from Coach Helton. On fourth down, Van Trees options out to White. Gets across the 10, taken down at the eight. That's going to be enough for a first down, but a flag is down on the play. Felt like a throwback moment seeing the option out there, <laughs> didn't it? Shades of the Eagles option offense from back in the day. Pretty good. Really good pitch relationship right there. Attack the, the read key. Got the ball out. However, Coach Helton not happy on the sideline. They may be on the Eagles. Personal foul. Illegal. Blindside block, offense number 21. 15 yards from the previous spot. Replay, fourth down. So Marcus Sanders, the freshman who we mentioned, an illegal block, going to send the Eagles back 15 yards. Ooh, that's dicey right there. You, look, freshmen are going to have freshman moments, and right there, you know, you're just looking where he's at. Uh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. So the Eagles are going to replay fourth down and rather go for it. They're going to pick a field goal as Alex Rayner makes his way on the field. So this will be a 46-yard field goal try for the redshirt junior Rayner from Kennesaw, Georgia. From the left hash. And the Eagles are on the board. Seven play drive capped off with a 46 yarder from Rayner makes it 6 3. 431 to play in the first. Marshall gets the ball back after the break. Georgia Southern answering back with a 46-yard field goal from Alex Randall. Let's send it down to Emily Grace McWhorter with more about Georgia Southern. This season.
season that the Eagles falter to a point where they could not get back into the game. I think I cut out there a little bit, but I'm referring to last Thursday's road loss against Louisiana. So he said that it was that really that first time the Eagles faltered. He went on to say it was an unanticipated loss because of how well his players had prepared on such a short week. The team used Saturday to recover, but got to work Sunday, which is usually a day for film to begin working on ideas for today's game against Marshall. Back to you. Thanks, E.G. Eagles head coach Clay Helton mentioned how mental rest was big for the team, playing two tough games in an 11-day span. I'm not going to lie to you, Danny. That's a hard thing to do, uh, just getting your body back to, together. I mean, you look from the game they had against South Alabama, very physical. They go to Louisiana, they play that game, a very physical game, and then you come back here, you play against a very talented Marshall team, especially defensively. I mean, that's, that's a lot on the body. So kudos to the Coach Helton for getting these guys rested and ready to play this game. Marshall will start from the 25, four receivers set. Fancher will hand off to Ali. And Ali taking down at the 30. So in Ali's first game this season, picks up a short game, his fifth carry. Yeah, I mean, Again, this is a very talented running back. All right, it's, again, it's strange we didn't, we haven't seen him all season, but here, here he is in these last two games. It, it's exciting to watch really talented running backs, and Coach Huff, he's known for finding these guys. Really talented recruiter at that. Second and five, Fancher will keep. He's a dual threat, sliding for a first down. Hit at the end by Anthony Wilson. Will there be a flag? No. No late hits. No, there is. Oh, yep. Well, hold up. No, there won't. Okay. So first and 10 from the 36 after Fancher's six-yard game. Going to run again. Tripped up at the 40. Really good tackle by Wilson right there to come. Or excuse me. Really good tackle right there to come in and make a play on the quarterback that's very good at running with it. Dual threat quarterback. Oh, we got an eagle down too. And a Marshall offensive player. Injuries on both sides. Something you don't want to see this late in the season. Eagles that appears to be the freshman defensive lineman Deshaun Davis. <laughs> Brutal for that defensive lineman to go down. We've seen some crazy things happen so far this season. Really good tackle by Wilson right there and see what happens. Looks like some guys got rolled up on each other. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, big man came down hard too. Davis at the very end. Both of those young men are all right. Marshall player getting up, and that is Trent Haller, the backup left guard. But Davis still down for the Eagles. Came down hard too. I saw him when he fought, when he fell. It looks like he got his legs taken up on, underneath him, and he's limping. Thank God for knee braces. And now Davis is up for the Eagles. will walk off with the trainers. A true freshman who made a big impact a couple of weeks ago for the Eagles against South Alabama had two big sacks in the first half of that game against the Jags. Yeah, again, talk about the injury bug, has how it's affected this Georgia Southern team. I mean, they lost number 57, the Trump Buller. They lost him last week against Louisiana, and now you're having another guy that's get injured. It's tough. Right here, you look at Coach Clay Hilton right here. And I know he's 
he's upset about when you have guys that get hurt. I mean, just obviously you can't control that, but I mean, it's the fact that you lose another guy and then you got to, it's the emotions of not having your guys out there when you get hurt. It's like watching a, you know, your, your dog get sick or something. It, it just hurts you inside, it doesn't feel right. Coach Elton has called a couple of injuries to the team. Gut punches, play resumes, second and six. The reverse handoff to Charles Montgomery. He spins out for a first down. And now you're seeing the herd open up the playbook a bit. Montgomery, the redshirt freshman from Seffner, Florida. Marshall from their own 46. Inside three minutes to play in the opening quarter. A lot of formation changes by that offense. Trying to get set. Two running backs to the left of Fanchon. It's going to be a handoff to Ethan Payne. And Payne gets across midfield to the 40. I'll tell you what, Payne had a good burst coming out of that. I mean, you look at the replay here. Really good again. Inside zone, just finds a little cutback, and then he just gets moving. And wasting no time. Montgomery catching a pass on the outside. And you're seeing this high tempo offense from Marshall. Another player down for the Eagles is Kadri Jackson. Just some more chippiness on the field. When we talked about what's at stake for both teams, bowl eligibility. I mean, emotions are going to get high. I mean, these are two former SoCon teams at that as well, so they have a little history of playing each other and came in late on that tackle. And you see the chippiness right there with a wide receiver DB matchup. I mean, it, it's one of those games where you got to have the chippiness in my opinion, because it just adds more flavor to the game, but you don't want to get out of hand and get personal fouls and whatnot, so you got to be careful, but you know, it, it's a physical sport. You know, it's, it's men trying to prove they're more superior than the other men across from them. That's what you got to love about the sport. Well, it's a game where you have to have your emotions in check. They're gaining four, second and six from the Eagles, 37. And off to Ali. Doesn't get far. Good stop by the Eagles on how to make it third down. It's a great tackle right there. It looks like he had a lot of space to hit that thing running. And way to step up right there, make a play in that gap, make a tackle. And right here you go. You got a long third down, and you know what's coming. It's going to be a pass situation. So you're going to look for Georgia Southern secondary to go ahead and sit back a little bit on their heels. Look for that pass, it's gonna come. It may be kind of quick coming out of there. Loss of one, the last play, third and seven. Fancer throwing and it's broken up by Tyler Bry. Was looking for Caleb McMillan and that'll bring up fourth down. Really good play break up by Bry. Come up and make a play, and that's what they're going to have. What Georgia Southern is going to have to do if they want to contain this passing game and make Fancher and, the, and that offense beat them in a the running game. We we talked about how lethal this running game can be, but I feel like that's something they want to kind of play on. McConnell going to punt again, and that one sails in the end zone. The last punt the herd had put the Eagles at the four, but the Eagles will start. And Van Trees's offense make his way back out. What needs to change from the Eagles here in the first call? Right now, this offense, they got to figure out something in the passing game. So honestly, Danny, I got five on it. They're going to figure something out right here. As I hear the song playing in the background, yeah. but they're going to have to figure something out. So we know this is a, typically more of an air raid team this year. They've ran the ball pretty well so far this game, but I feel like you got to open up the playbook more. Maybe some RPOs. From the 20, O.J. Arnold at the running back. He'll get the handoff. Rather, it's a play fake to Caleb Hood. They even tripped me up right up there for a second. That was a good fake, wasn't it? Yeah. He sold it. <laughs> That's a really good sell right there. Sold it well. Gain of five.
Second down. Bantrese throws the other way to Sanders. Forward progress will give him a first down. So one thing you can see, Danny, they're not taking those deep shots like they typically do, and that's something when you have limited personnel in terms of you don't have the guys that are veterans that have been making these plays all season. You lose those guys, you kind of got to work with what you got. So having these little short throws, just kind of get the receivers going in. Bantrese comfortable. I think it's a smart decision. Arnold on first down, doesn't get far. A short gain of two. You see Van Treese's number is a start, five of seven, just 28 yards. You mentioned Nicole not going deep downfield, going to some fade routes, out, screen plays outside. Be the final play of the quarter after a gain of one. Second and nine. Throws to the far side, rather near side, the Sanders again. Tackled at the 35, and that will end the first quarter. Explosive start with Marshall's touchdown to E.J. Horton. 6-3 herd as we go to the second on ESPN+. Plus. Seventh all-time meeting between two former SoCon rivals as we welcome you back on ESPN Plus. This is the first time that the Eagles and the Thundering Herd have faced off against each other in 26 years, and Marshall has won the last four meetings, Cole. Yeah, I mean, we I mentioned it earlier. These are both former SoCon schools, okay? So there's a little bit of pride in this game. It'll be third and six from the 35 to start the quarter. Van Trees quickly finds a man short of a first down. Evan Lester on the catch, his second overall on the season. But it's going to be fourth down and two, and out comes the punt team. The Eagles have struggled on third down so far. 0 for 3. When you're facing the best third down defense in the nation, you're going to have some problems. Well, I mean, they're living up to that, that ranking that they have as being the best third down defense, right? Gilmore back to receive the punt. They call a fair catch at the 19. What do you make of the start from Marshall throughout the first quarter? Honestly, I think this is about what we expected to see. All right, you talk about a really strong start to start off the game. Four plays, 75 yards. You get a touchdown. Big touchdown pass by the redshirt freshman, Cam Fancher, okay? It kind of stalled out a little bit, not really getting much going, having to punt the ball or not getting things going offensively as much as they did in that first series. So kudos to Georgia Southern's defense for stepping up. But then you look at Georgia Southern's offense, they haven't really been getting anything going in the passing game so far. A lot of success in the running game, but no touchdowns to show for that. So it's kind of about what I expected to see. So rather the herd will start from the 20. Miller in motion. Fancher hands off to Labron, and Labron taken down quickly by Justin Ellis, a six-year senior with a big first down stop, and Labron limping off the field. Exactly what Georgia Southern's defense need to do. Make a big play in the backfield. Not, don't let Labron get loose, because we know how dangerous he is in a running game. So really good, good, good momentum stopper right there to come in and make a play. So Rasheed Ali in our running back. On second and nine, we mentioned playing his first game this season. Pressure coming. How did Fancher get out of it? Has to let it go out of bounds. It's a smart decision by Fancher, but that was another great job by the Eagles. Ellis breaking things up at the line of scrimmage. Well, sometimes you got to wrap up, and that was the big thing. That was the big mistake right there. Didn't wrap up, so Fancher, being as talented as he is as an escape artist, got out of that sack and then made the right decision to throw the ball away, not to keep holding on to it, because you just never know what could have happened. Third and nine, Marshall two for four on third downs here in the half. Play clock at eight. Clock at three. Pancher 
for a handoff. Payne Ooh. hit hard. Anthony Wilson brought the pain. What do you think about the three and out from the Eagles? Well, that was a very good stop right there by the Eagles. You said it. <laughs> the pain was brought right there. That was a really good job flying in there, making a really good hit. And that's what you got to have in games like this. You want to be able to show that you have that type of oomph to yourself. And we look at this replay. So we're going to go outside zone here. Good penetration. Force them to try to cut back and wait to come in and make a play shoot in that gap. Did not go far by McConnell. Put the Eagles at the 29. The Eagles offense back out after the break on ESPN Plus. Back on ESPN Plus, 6 3 Marshall over Georgia Southern. And Cole, the Eagles have had struggles on third downs in their first couple of drives. 0 for 3, they're facing the top third down defense in the nation. How do they get past that? Honestly, you got to just say, you know what, strap your strap your chin straps up and say, we got to go to work because it, it's it's a, honestly a reoccurring theme. We've seen this with some of the teams that have come to Paulson Stadium, really good third down team, so they got to strap in. The Eagles will start from the 27, or at, at the 28. That handoff, they have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. I mean, Georgia Southern, they lead the Sun Belt Conference in third down conversions on offense, but it's been the herd that's been winning the battle so far in the half. Well, not only that, but when you look at it, this Georgia Southern offense was a top five team in third downs in, in the whole FBS, and it's just been harder for them to convert as the season's been progressing. Second and nine, Van Trees. Plenty of time in the pocket, gonna air one out downfield. Incomplete. Was looking for Caleb Hood, broken up by Daytuan Smith. So I'm pretty sure one thing that Marshall's defense is gonna be thinking about, whenever they see Hood get down the field, that's gonna be where that deep shot's gonna go. They're gonna go, Van Trees is gonna trust the guy that has the most experience to, for these deep balls. Third and nine. 29. Four receivers set for Van Trees. Gonna throw it again. Too far for Hood. And three and out for the Eagles. Gonna bring out the punt team again. He's having no production these last couple of possessions. Uh, you can see it in the passing game. It's just harder and harder for Van Trees to get going. And you can see that Hood was talking to Van Trees coming off the sidelines on to just kind of look for certain things out there. They maybe had something there and maybe to just kind of throw that ball a little bit differently. But when you have young receivers out there, it's a lot harder to take those shots and trust them. So that's just something that it has to come naturally in this game. So those young receivers, they're going to have to start contributing big. Big punt from Beck. Gilmore on the return. Breaking a couple of tackles, making some men miss, and tackled across the 35. Marshall back on the field on offense when we return on ESPN+. Plus. Marshall leading 6-3 on ESPN+. Plus. You see quarterback Cam Fancher along with Henry Columbia, who was the starting quarterback to start the season. But once Columbia missed a couple of games, Fancher stepped up and had, had some pretty good games so far and trying to continue that here against Georgia Southern tonight. Well, you talk about when opportunity meets preparation, that's what luck is right there. And honestly, Fancher's been playing some pretty good football leading up to this moment. Again, Russia, a freshman, has a lot of growth left, but you can kind of see where the potential is and maybe where his ceiling may end up being by the time he's a senior. We saw that growth from the first possession. Yep. That 65-yard pass downfield to E.J. Horton. The herd will start from the 36. Fans are going to throw far side. Across the 40. Corey Gamage with the second reception. 
Southern's going to have to sit right here in these zone coverages. They got to be better at covering these short routes because that's honestly what Marshall's going to do. That's going to be their money in the passing game, these quick passes to get Fancher going. Correction, that was Gamage's first catch for a gain of six. Throw over the head of Jaden Harrison. The ball rolled out of bounds. It'll bring up third down. It will be an incomplete pass rather than a potential fumble. Either way, the ball run out of play. Yeah, I mean, again, kudos to Georgia Southern's defense. They're, they're starting to get back there. They're starting to get a little bit of penetration. That got to keep doing that, especially on this crucial third down. Third and four. Play clock at six. Gotta get going. Clock at two. And that's could be a timeout call by Marshall, and it is. So Charles Huff gets the timeout off in time. And while we have a moment, we talked about the head coaches for each side, Charles Huff for Marshall, Clay Helton for Georgia Southern. But Coach Helton talking about how this was more so going to be a battle of the coordinators, and specifically talking about the Eagles defensive coordinator, Will Harris, and the Herds offensive coordinator, Clint Trickett. That name may sound familiar to some people because Trickett was the quarterback's coach at East Mississippi Community College. You may have seen that on Last Chance U a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah. I kind of hope they bring that back. I mean, <laughs> I've been missing that show. This is just unfiltered college football. But, I mean, yes, it's kind of like watching the Queens game. And we're going to stay with the Netflix theme. It's a big chess match. All right, who can outsmart who? And right now, Will Harris so far, he's been, they've been playing pretty good. You get, Yeah, they had that touchdown pass that happened early in the game on that first series, but they've settled in a lot. So, it's going to be a long chess match from here on out, and honestly, I'm excited. Coach Helton has credited Will Harris for making adjustments mid-game against Louisiana. Has made some great adjustments here tonight after that opening touchdown. Third and four from the 42 out of the Marshall timeout. Play clock at five. Hand off to Ali. Had the first down across midfield, taken out of bounds by Najee Thompson. How has Ali made an impact here in this game, Cole? You can just see the speed, and you can kind of see the, you see the fresh legs on Ali, all right? Hasn't played a game yet. Comes in here. I mean, you, you just see the, the health in him, all right? He's completely healthy, running the ball well. They went back to their bread and butter, split inside zone, and it just works out well. In Eagle territory from the 48. Fans are going to keep. Going to bounce outside and run out of bounds. With Ali back in the mix as well, we haven't seen much of Kalen Laburn. How does that trip up the Eagles? Because this entire week, they've been preparing for Laburn rather than Ali. Well, I feel like at the same time, you can't get rid of your game plan too much. I mean, I, you know what Marshall's going to do. In order for their offense to work, they have to be good at running the football. So you should still expect that. I don't think much should change there. Maybe, yeah, the personnel's a little bit different. Maybe a little bit in terms of physical attributes. But I don't think much should really change. Five-yard game from Fancher. Here's Laburn. Pushes his way across the 40, maybe short of a first down. Short by about two yards. Hurry up offense from the herd. Split zone. Laburn gets a first down. It's Laburn's fifth carry. I haven't seen much yardage from him. It's a first down from the 33 on the seven yard gain for Labron, 14 yards in the first half on the ground. Eagles showing blitz. Labron, good protection, finds an open man at the 15. And a touchdown for the herd. Shadid Ahmed walks his way in. See right there, they ended up bringing pressure, so they blitz. And anytime, typically when you blitz, that's going to put your defense in man coverage, and no one was covering. 
nobody was in coverage there to kind of pick up there where he should have been. It should have been in man coverage. No one was there. So that's a blown assignment by Georgia Southern's defense. So that's something they have to fix. And, and you can see the mental errors are starting to accumulate, and that's what's going to hurt this team from being bowl eligible. Bancher, his second touchdown pass. The PAT is good this time from Reese Vierhoff. And Fancher, a 33-yard pass to an open Shadid Ahmed for his first touchdown on the year. Marshall letting it fly in Paulson up 13-3 with 9.31 to play in the second. Here we are looking at this play right here. I mean, you talk about when you're going to bring pressure, guys have to be cognizant of what's going on. And as we get this play rolling here, you can see it here. Pressure's coming, all right? See, so he sneaks past him, all right? He gets lost. He was supposed to stay with him. And the thing about it, when you're covering, you want to keep the, the receivers in front of you. He let him get behind him. He lost where he was at. And that's what makes it for an easy touchdown. That's something that this Georgia Southern defense cannot allow to happen if they want to win this football game. Long coverage on that touchdown pass from Cam Fancher to Shadid Ahmed, making it 13-3. How can the Eagles respond on offense, Cole? Well, one, you got to have a little bit. You got to have some urgency, not even a little bit of urgency. You need to have a lot of bit of urgency right here because you're down 10 points. You know exactly what this Marshall offense can do. They can run the ball really well. You've had success running the football. I think you start to go back to that. You need to mix in these RPOs, these play-action passes need to find a way to get Caleb Hood activated. I think that's the best way for this Georgia Southern offense to kind of get themselves back in the game. Number 25, Van Trees, flea flicker, plenty of time, throws one, has Sanders taken out of the 45. Well, that's one way to spark the offense right there on the first play of the drive, Cole. There you go, you gotta get the young guys moving. This Marshall defense, they're gonna sleep a little bit on these young receivers because they haven't had a lot of action. Right there, Marcus Sanders makes a huge catch right there to move the chains, and here we go. Georgia Southern's offense is moving. That's the freshman's fourth reception for 20 yards. From the 45, White the carry, powers his way in, burst of speed for an Eagles first down. There it is, things are starting to click a little bit more for this offense. They're moving with a lot of high tempo too. You can see that, really big play in the passing game. Here we go, really big play in the running game. How much you want to bet they'll probably go with another pass here? Find out, four receivers set. Rather, White will keep. Gets to the 40. They're getting really big chunks in the yardage game, too. You can see the urgency in this offense now. They didn't really have that in the first quarter and a little bit earlier in the second quarter. They have that now. Bantrees fumble. Marshall has it. At the last second, Damian Barber after the mishap from Van Trees trying to get the ball to White. Looks like Van Trees was trying to pull it. And you can see that RPO was starting to click in his head. He saw the re crash down right there towards Jalen White. Van Trees wanted to pull it and take it with them and either to find the receiver out there in the area to throw the ball to or take it himself and run with it. And we know Van Trees can run with the football. And you saw right there, just hesitated way too long to pull the ball out and that's what caused the turnover. Wow. The Eagles were moving. Thought they were going to make a, another big play, but rather a turnover. So Marshall has it at their own 43. First down, here's Anthony Turner. Wow. Going to go the other way across midfield. Honestly, that was a really good stretch run. I mean, you saw the guy, saw the defensive line get pushed around. And there's one thing that you can't have on the defense right there. And when you're running, when a team runs inside zone or outside zone, and you get two hold, which means you go from the A gap all the way down to the C gap. You better, you better start praying a little bit because you're going to be in a world of trouble. Gain of nine for the freshman Turner. Second and one, quick pass, incomplete. Fancher was looking for Ahmed. From the Eagles defense, they start getting a little bit ready to start shooting the gap a little bit because you see Labor is coming in the game. You can expect maybe a run, maybe that split inside zone. That's their bread and butter play. It could be coming. 
These linebackers got to be able to control the gaps. Third and short. You see the Eagles showing pressure from the middle, and there's the flag. start false start offense 65 five yard penalty remains third down gonna go on the center logan osborne uh, as a former center you know that kind of kind of hurts to see that uh typically when you have a false start in the center you know it's just more of you twitch a little bit because you see the backers are coming yeah and you got to be able to pick that up and i, I you know i understand it but you got to be able to hold your water a little bit so third and six from the 47 trips left for fancher Labor in the running back. Fancher rolling left. Floats one deep. Caught. And Harrison. The big play. The drive continues for the herd. Defense has to be better in their coverage schemes. We can see a lot of blown coverage happening right now. And that's exactly what got Georgia Southern in the hole last week against Louisiana in that second quarter. Just a lot of blown assignments. You can start to see that now. From the 25, Labor in the handoff up the middle, puts the herd in the red zone. On the 28 yard pass from Fancer to Harrison to get the herd downfield, and then a six yard carry from Labor. Second and four. Approaching seven minutes in the second quarter. Fancher, quarterback keep, has blockers. Touchdown, Hurd. There you, go. you see it again. So th there was no safety on that side. Fancher decided to keep it. Just finds the hole that's there. Safety's so far off, and it was such great blocking. I mean, just, wow, chef's kiss on the blocking assignments, how well they were executed. He finds that hole and just keeps it running. Fancher is so dangerous with his legs. That ability, I mean, it, it's kind of hard. It's kind of like, I don't know if you, Danny, I don't know if you've ever seen two pretty best friends before. I know you're engaged, so you probably can't even answer that. But right there, when you look at Fancher and you look at the running backs that they have in that room, it's like looking at two beautiful best friends. Well, the besties are getting it done, the job done for Marshall. A five-play, 57-yard drive capped off the 19-yard run from Fancher after the Eagles' turnover. It's 20-3, to three, Thundering Herd up top. Marshall leading 20 to three and bowl eligibility on the line. And both teams trying to make it to one of these five Sun Belt Conference bowl games at the end of the year, Cole. Well, the way things are looking right now, Marshall keeps playing the way they are. They're gonna secure one of these bowl games. And honestly, it's gonna be much warmer weather than it is in Virginia right now. So that's something to look forward to. Ball took a bounce. I believe a fair catch was called before Arnold went to carry. And Oh, that's amazing. Well, some Eagle fans are not used. Or <laughs> we got some uh, unique Georgia Southern fans here in Paulson. The cold is not affecting them at all. I, you got to love that, right? You know, just the true energy to the game right there. Shirts off. I bet he's been hooting and hollering all game. And. It's yes, just amazing. but not when you're down 20 to 3. <laughs> Let's see how the Eagles can respond starting from their own 22. 7 4 to go in the first half. There's still plenty of ball game to go. But we've seen high tempo offenses on both sides, and you really felt it from Marshall at the start with their opening drive. And even with the Eagles in their last drive, they were rolling before Van Trees had the fumble. Well, the thing about it, Danny, when things are clicking for your offense, you want to be able to keep the defense on their toes. If you want them to feel like they can't catch their breath. But when you have moments where you have a turnover like that on a handoff, that can hurt you pretty bad, and it can slow up the tempo.
officials were having a discussion. Everything should be all cleared out, so the Eagles will start from the 22. Singleton in motion. Van Trees back to pass. Throws near side to Singleton, it's short. Van Trees is eight for 13, for only 55 yards. He's been throwing more so outside than downfield. Again, you can tell that's more than likely because of you don't have your typical weapons. You don't have Burgess. You don't have um, you don't have typical receivers that are there. You don't have Amari. You don't have those guys that are healthy and that limits your playing ability. Incomplete. Broken up by Micah Abraham, looking for Singleton again, and it's third and ten. And Danny, this is honestly a hard test for these young receivers because this Marshall secondary is extremely talented. You know, Abrams over more than six or six picks so far this season. Then you look at Gilmore, and you know who his older brother is, right? Stephon Gilmore. Yeah. You don't think he taught us some tricks to the trade? Defensive Player of the Year back in 2019. Go ahead and get the straps ready for that matchup. Well, the Eagles have yet to make a third down conversion, third and long. Plenty of time in the pocket for Van Trees, rolling right. And the catch can't be made by White. Three incompletions from Van Trees on that drive. And really cold, this defense for Marshall has been doing a great job tonight. They definitely have. And you can kind of see that there's just no juice with this Georgia Southern offense on that particular series. They just didn't look like they were really pumped to go and you know, they, they got to find ways to reel things back in because right now they're just not performing at a, a level that we've seen them play. And I understand injuries are very relevant or relevant going on for this team, and it's kind of slowing them down, but they got to figure something else out. Got to give credit to defensive coordinator Lance Guidry. That's Beck. Brings that one downfield and bounces back almost towards midfield. Not the bounce that. Beck wanted, and the herd going to have the ball at good field position. Yeah, so far it's looking like one of those games where nothing's really going your way, and it's going to it's up to the coaches, and not only that, but the captains of this football team to get everybody locked in and have short-term memory about what's going on because they, they, there's something at stake here. You're talking about extending your season. If you want that, you got to be able to tune out the, the mistakes. Well, Van Trees, 8 of 15 for 55 yards. On the other side, Cam Fancher, 9 for 15, 188 yards, and two touchdown passes, also a touchdown on the ground. Talk about Fancher's playing with such efficiency right now in this game. I, you would have known he was a redshirt freshman. The herd will start from their own 47. Fancher going to keep. And he won't get far. Isaac Walker stayed with him. And that may be the momentum that the Eagles need. Maybe, but really good job by Isaac Walter. You saw Fancher put that stiff arm on, excuse me, his, that stiff arm on him. And he fought right through it. Made a really good tackle right there to have a negative five yardage, five yard loss. That's gonna help out this Eagles defense as the game continues to progress, or excuse me, this series progresses. Second tackle for loss for Walker this season. After a loss of five, Ali following his blockers and Marquez Watson Trent there on the stop. That's exactly what the Eagles defense need to do. Swarm to the ball, shoot the gaps, get penetration, and you're going to be able to create some negative plays. And that's exactly one of those right there. So it's two straight negative plays have happened so far when Marshall's tried to keep the ball on the ground. So you know it's obvious passing downs. Don't give Fancher anything easy. See where you are in coverage. It looks like they're gonna probably go cover one. So they gotta play discipline, maybe cover three here. Four receivers set on third and 14. Play clock at five. Fancher gotta get his guy set. Gets the snap off in time. Throws near side, has an open man and Harrison. And Harrison may be short of the first down. We'll see where the referees mark it. He is short, but Marshall going to go for it. More than likely going to go split zone run. It might, it's going to probably be coming. They got to be ready for it. Get those linebackers ready. Shoot the gaps. 
Not giving the Eagles time to think, but Georgia Southern calls a timeout. Very smart timeout. Just the way that was looking, the momentum was on that side. I could tell that split inside zone was coming. Linebackers were going to have to be queued up, ready to go, shoot those gaps, and make a big play if they wanted to have a turnover on downs. The referee is also going to move the clock back to 444. And on fourth down and one, while both teams have an opportunity to talk things over, Cole, if you're Marshall, do you still go for it here? I mean, it's up, you're 20 to three right now. I, don't, I mean, you're really in a good position. I mean, Georgia Southern hasn't been able to do a lot on offense. Yeah, so Georgia Southern hasn't been able to do much on offense. And then you look at Marshall, Marshall's moving the ball at will on this defense. So, I mean, if you want to go ahead and run the ball, you want to take a, you know, take a pass here and, and do that. I don't see why not. I mean, you, you trust your defense. They've been playing extremely well. I don't see why you don't go for it. But it looks like they're gonna go ahead and punt it anyway. So calling an audible. And you can and tell that timeout. Punt. You can tell that timeout took that momentum out of it too, to where they were probably gonna go for it. As we mentioned, the weather is gonna play a factor a little bit. Currently 48 degrees, not that cold in Huntington, West Virginia, probably colder as McConnell punts that one out of bounds. Probably got a snowman built up out there right now. Did you see the, the snow in Buffalo this week? That's why the, the Bills game got moved to Detroit. To be honest with you, Danny, if I was still playing, I would have loved to play in that, in that environment, playing the snow. And I'm not going to lie to you, I've been <laughs> cold, I've been freezing, and there have been a lot of penguin huddles on the sideline, but I would have enjoyed playing in the snow. I mean, seeing the, the way the snow was piling up, I mean, I, I feel like the NFL, I know a lot of people don't like the NFL making that decision, but I think in this scenario, that was probably the right move. Yeah, you're talking about the players now. Over so. almost six feet of snow, taller than some of the Bills running backs. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're talking about the players. I mean, you want to keep them healthy. The Eagles will start from the 15. Jalen White stays on his feet. Now we'll see how the Eagles try and answer back with 4.30 to play in the half. Looks like the Eagles gave Marshall a dosage of a little bit of inside zone there. And like we talked about early in the first quarter, that run game was lethal. They got to stick with it. White the carry again. Still going. I mean, if I'm Georgia Southern, I stay stick with Jalen White because that's his 11th carry, and he has over 130 yards rushing now. The one bright spot for the Eagles offense. I mean, they got to keep setting them up. Keep running it hard with Jalen White, and then next thing you know, you go RPO play action, and boom, get a first down in the passing game. Another carry for White gets the Eagles another first down. OJ Arnold then gives Jalen White a little bit of a breather. 37. Arnold the carry. And he won't be as successful as White. Barely got back to the line of scrimmage. The Eagles are, we talked about, they're down a couple of receivers. We're also down a running back. Gerald Green also out for tonight. So Arnold getting more involved as the backup running back. Van Trees quick fire to Singleton. Stays on his feet, goes outside, gets towards midfield, and the Eagles keep the drive going. Another first down. Well, you talk about receivers and running backs that are injured. Really good play right here. So Singleton looks like he's about to be tackled, gets out of that, stays on his feet, and then makes a smart business decision. Go ahead and get out of bounds. Stop the clock. First and 10 from midfield. Arnold breaks through. Arnold gets a first down. I'll tell you what, right now the MVP of this offense is definitely going to be in this run game. So you're talking about Arnold, you're talking about Jalen White. The MVP is so far the, run, the running backs because they've been getting the, the chains moving. Gain of 10. Van Trees quick fire to Sanders and couldn't hang on to the pass. I mean, you talked about Cole how 
after a couple of runs, the Eagles would throw the ball, but you got to make that catch if you're the freshman, Sanders. You definitely got to make that catch. As I love to say about receivers, if the ball ever hits you in the hands, you got to catch it, and then you got to go. Right there, you saw Sanders. He heard those footsteps coming. He knew that secondary. They can hit hard. He heard those footsteps. Ball hit him right in the hands. He was worried about trying to make a guy miss. Just got to worry about catching the football. Second and ten. Three receivers for Van Treese. Play action. Rolling right. Throws. Incomplete. Near the flag. Likely pass interference on the herd. More than likely, you can you saw that. You saw that arm kind of get around that hip a little bit in order for him to get that, that hand out there to get a deflection on the football. So it wouldn't surprise me to pass interference first down and Georgia Southern still on the field. Pass interference, defense, 41. This is a spot foul and automatic first down. First and 10, Georgia Southern. We look at it here on replay. Right there, you see that arm kind of pull, pull Singleton's arm back a little bit and that's where that flag that came in. Really good eye by the officials to catch that and Right there, when you have a chance to put Georgia Southern's offense down a little bit, they find a way to stay on the field and get a fresh set of downs. And the 27, quick pass to Caleb Hood. And Hood, burst of speed, touchdown Eagles. And that was exactly what that Eagles offense needed. So you have that the, pa the pass interference that comes in, gets you a fresh set of downs. They go basically a full wide receiver screen right here, tunnel screen, get the offensive line down the field. And everybody had already on that defense that came down trying to make a play on the quarterback. And it was just Caleb Hood with nobody near him. And he's just running for green grass. That's one way to stop the drought if you're the Eagles. Caleb Hood, nicknamed Mr. Consistency. He's the all-time leader in receptions in a season and in a career at Georgia Southern. Now the 27 yard reception from Kyle Van Trees. That may be the spark that the Eagles need here in this half. Well, we've seen the Eagles, the times they were down here in Paulson Stadium, when it looked, things looked bleak, they always found ways. And you can see it here, got big boys in space. I mean, look, that offensive line kind of looked like a little bit of a herd of elephants moving down the field. So when you're able to get guys in space like that and they're able to make blocks and then you got a speedy receiver like Caleb Hood, you can get down the field and score a touchdown. So now Georgia Southern's defense, they need to take that momentum and they need to be able to find a way to stop this high-powered Marshall offense that's been moving the ball so well with Cam Fancher at the hill. There was no way that the herd was going to stop Caleb Hood. That's literally like a just an easy 40-yard dash, with that in his case, 27 yards. But overall, Hood also the four-time state champion in track. And that his speed was on display there. I mean, it showed. I mean, it definitely showed. I'm curious to see what the analysts are going to say about his <laughs> miles per hour. I'm very curious to see what that's going to be. Hood with his third touchdown on the year, and Van Tree starting to find that connection with Hood. It's 20 to 10 after the eight play, 85 yard drive from the Eagles. That took 223 off the clock. And Michael Land sends that ball in the end zone. So the herd will start from the 25. How do you respond if you're Marshall Cole? Oh, you keep doing what you've been doing. You just gotta strap up and you gotta take all that air away from them because they have, they have a little momentum, chest getting a little bit big. You know, it's that air starting to kick in. You gotta take all that right back out. And this is a very good, Marshall offense and you can see that Van Treese and Hood are talking right now so you know they're going to be planning for what to what to do next and how they can keep making some plays happen because honestly it's going to come down to those two making things happen for the rest of this game if they want to come back and win and now this Marshall offense they got to take all that momentum right back snatch it away it's like they're putting their hand in their in their chest and taking their heart out they got to do it if they want to continue to have this lead Sheen Ali in a running back for the herd. First and 10 from the 25. Bancher will keep, bounces out, gets a first down. And we haven't really talked much about Fancer's running ability. That's his sixth keep on the night. He's extremely lethal when he keeps the ball. I mean, you talk about it. I told you, Danny, he's like two pretty best friends. You don't see those often. 
but you definitely got that one with Fancher's in the game, when you have Laburn in the game, or when you have Ali in the game. You just never know who's going to be back there and who's going to keep the ball. I mean, they're just so dangerous. It just helps to have a dual-threat quarterback. After a 12-yard gain, Fancher will throw. Looking for a man, bounces out of the pocket. Good blocking from the O-line. Fancher across midfield, and another first down. Fancher getting the job done on his feet. They're going to have to make an adjustment on defense. They need to have a spy that can run sideline to sideline with Fancher that can keep up with them. And honestly, that's what helps a 4-2-5 defense work so well in college football and really in football but in general when you have a guy that can run sideline to sideline with you because those two backers, they may be smaller, but they should be pretty fast to get there whenever they see a dual threat quarterback on the move. Inside two minutes of play in the first half. In Eagle territory from the 46. Quick throw to Ali. Ali walks out at the 41. We talked about how it's pretty cold here in Statesboro. 49 degrees, but in Huntington, West Virginia, it's currently 35 and it's going to get colder. It's like, like a little light breeze from Marshall right now <laughs> being down here versus being back at home. Like a fall day. Second and five from the 41. Four receivers from Fancher. Play clock at five. Fancher will keep. Breaks out of a tackle. Sliding at the end was hit by Watson Trent. Bring up third and short. You can see the defense starting to play the quarterback a little bit more because they're starting to realize he's a dangerous threat with those feet. Watch the split zone. Third and three, Ali, nowhere to go. Marquez Watson Trent with a big third down stop. That's just one heck of a play recognition. You've been seeing that inside zone, that little split zone run the whole game. They're bread and butter. It finally came, and Georgia Southern's defense adjusted well to it. So Marshall going to call a timeout on fourth and one. Last time, when it was fourth and short, the herd were going to go for it, but Georgia Southern called a timeout, and then the herd decided to punt instead. If you're Marshall, do you stick with your guns and go for it this time? I know you stay cold, scare money, don't make money. So what do you do here? I'm going to stick with what I say. Scaring money don't make money, Danny. It don't make money. You can't be scared. Look, you're playing for bowl eligibility, all right? Georgia Southern just took the ball down the field and scored a touchdown. Do you really want to get them the ball back right now with 50-something seconds? Yeah, probably about 45 when they get the ball. They punt it. But still, I mean, and, and then you got to look at it on the other side. Look, what if you don't get this fourth down? What if you don't convert? And you really give that momentum boost to Georgia Southern. But look. I think you keep the quarterback out there, and that's what they're going to do. Maybe you try to draw them off sides. Maybe that could happen. I don't know. But you know what? I think I still go inside zone. A little split inside zone. They've been running all day. They're bread and butter. They may not run it in that spot. Or maybe go a little kind of read option here. That's possible, too. Well, remember, Georgia Southern gets the ball to start the second half. They won the toss, but chose to defer. And Marshall will go for it on fourth down. Second time out of the first Southern half. will talk things over. So both teams with one timeout remaining. It's like you can feel the, the anticipation and the, the nervousness right now between these coordinators because, like we talked about, it, it's like the ultimate chess match. Because more than likely, I'm, I'm willing to bet Marshall is going to go read option right there. Fancher probably would not have kept the ball. I believe he probably would have handed it off. And that might have hurt Georgia Southern's defense. And I don't think anybody was going to be on that edge or be able to penetrate those gaps. But then now, Georgia Southern's defense on their side, they're like, wait, wait a minute. You know, probably going to be doing that. We may need to send a little bit of pressure. Well, here's the thing for Marshall. They are last in the Sun Belt Conference in fourth down conversion at 29%. They were one for two last week in their 28-21 win over Appalachian State. Thought about going for it earlier. This is their goal line formation, full house formation right here, so you know it's going to be a run. 
Fourth and one with 51 seconds to go in the half. Handoff. Stopped. So the runner was short, carrying Smith, the big body up front for the Eagles. And that's a big momentum shifter. Yeah, like I said, like I said, scary money don't make money. And in that case, Marshall's offensive line didn't get any movement, which is strange because they've been moving Georgia Southern's defensive line pretty well all game. And then you have that right there. You think just get your pads down a little bit lower and then just drive them out the hole. But Georgia Southern credit that defense for just bowing their necks and making a, a big stop. Now we know how quick the Eagles can go downfield on offense, but Eagles head coach Clay Helton mentioned touchdowns over field goals. They need a score here instead of going for three. Yeah, you said it. They need a touchdown here. Even if you get seven here, you only be down three. You get the ball back. That's huge. From the 38, first and 10. Put in motion. Van Trees throws. Has Hood. Across midfield. Big first down for the Eagles. You can tell Gilmore misjudged that one. He thought he was going to have an interception right there. Van Trees put enough air on that ball where it went straight to Hood. Sailed right over Gilmore's hands. Huge first down, got out of bounds, stopped the clock. You don't have to burn a timeout. And the clock stopped at 42 seconds, and we're going to take a look at it. Well, before the officials look at it, let's take a look at it ourselves. see here I mean. on the field is a catch with possession at the sideline timeout the previous play is under further review oh mm. see that a little bit yeah rewind that back slow motion slow motion for me baby here it is <laughs> so oh oh man that might go back that might go back but let's see where that toe it looks like it's going to probably be on the big toe right here is that in and it looks like he got maybe a little toe tap in there on that one foot Looks like his left foot may have just toe tapped it. Let's see if right here, this is probably a pretty good angle. Oh no. That's a close one. Well, the thing about it, Danny, if it's a close one, it's gonna be hard to turn turn it the call over. Well, the front of his toe, of Hood's toe, was in, but as his foot came down, the heel looked like it was out of bounds. So if if you're the official, what do you, do you call do you call that a catch with the with the toe in? We talk about toe tapping. What do you think? Look, if we're, if we're going to go by how hard that looks, that that's very hard to judge, all right? It looks like that toe did tap in before he went out, so I can see a case for that. But if you just look at it full through, it looks like the, the whole foot came down. It looked like it could have been out of bounds. But like I said, if there's not enough evidence to turn it over, they're going to keep the ruling. And I don't know. I, I just that's, that's a hard call to make. I think they're going to keep it because that's hard to really spot. Big, especially with 42 seconds to go in the first half. Georgia Southern looking for one more score before going to the locker room. Could, could you imagine if Georgia Southern, let's say they do end up getting the first down here, right? It's a confirmed catch. They end up getting a touchdown on this drive. They get the extra point. They're down three. Then they get the ball back after halftime. That's a huge momentum shift. This is where that missed PAT at the start from Reese Vierhoff may come back to bite the herd. And we can talk, we talked about that. It's an incomplete pass. Mm. The ball will be second, second and 10 at the 38 yard line. So an incomplete pass. Call is reversed. And like I said, honestly, I could have saw it going either way, but they they saw it. I guess, you know, they, they had the better eye. Shout out to the, you know, the, uh, the officiating crew and the review officials by seeing that, that that whole foot was out of bounds. But I could have. Like I said, if it was me, it would have been hard for me to tell the difference. I'm not going to lie to you. My eyes aren't going to be able to tell that big of a difference. Three has changed his jersey back to 55. So we are, that's why we're in the booth up here and not down there. So the Eagles back at their own 38. Second and 10. Van Trees going long, incomplete, was looking for Singleton. 
Good coverage from Deani Hill. A little bit of an eye, eyebrow raising throw right there. I, I didn't like that decision from, from Van Trees to throw it there. I think he could have found anybody else out there. I saw some guys get open late. I think he had enough time to start surveying the field a little bit more. Third and 10, the Eagles 0 for 5 on third down conversion tonight. They give it to White. He stopped. So what was a potential momentum shift there after the fourth down stop from the Eagles defense? The Eagles have a call that gets reversed that would have put them on the other side of the field. And as the clock winds down, the offense is still out there. So Vantrese just might go for it or may let the clock run out. They're going to let the clock run out. So the Eagles will go in the locker room down 20 to 10 at the half. Bowl eligibility is on the line. And Marshall been off to a great start before the Eagles. Getting that touchdown to Caleb Hood definitely sparked things. And that could help the Eagles getting the ball back to start the second half. Our own Emily Grace McWhorter is standing by with Eagles head coach Clay Helton. Coach, you continue to talk about putting your team in a position to fight. Caleb Hood mm -hmm. did that with that touchdown. He had a big stop on fourth and one. How does that continue in the second half? Yeah, you know, we get the ball first, which is important. We got an opportunity to cut it to a one-score game. Got to be a little bit better on third down efficiency offensively, and the turnover in the red zone really hurt. Um, so clean up some of the self-made errors, and we'll put ourselves right back in the game. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. That'll take us to a commercial break. 2010, Marshall at the half over Georgia Southern. We'll talk first half stats and more when we come back on ESPN+. Plus. Moments away from beginning the second half on ESPN+. Plus. Take a look at some elite scores around the Sun Belt Conference. We mentioned how... The Coastal Carolina-Virginia game was canceled, but South Alabama went over Southern Miss. James Madison holding off against Georgia State. How about Appalachian State 27-14 over Old Dominion? That means next week the Mountaineers face Georgia Southern for bowl eligibility, Cole. Well, the way it's looking, if Marshall finds a way that they continue to play as well as they are so far, they win this game. I'll tell you what, it's going to be one exciting game next week when App State comes down to Statesboro. Troy beating Louisiana Monroe 34-16. We know that the Chanticleers represent the East Division in the Sun Belt Championship game, but it's between Troy and South Val in the West. Georgia Southern will get the ball to start the second half. It's going to be a short kick. Taken at the 20. It was caught by the Eagles' Brandon Wilson. So what do you believe the, the biggest adjustments the Eagles need to make here, Colt, in the second half? Well, one thing, they got to get this offense moving. They got to start throwing the football, and they got to be able to complete these passes, take some shots if they're available, get Caleb Hook going, and keep feeding Jalen White. We talked about how well he's been running the ball, 143 yards off of 13 carries. You keep feeding that guy, I think you're going to be in a pretty good place to come back in this ball game. Eagles will start from the 25. Kyle Van Treach was 10 for 20 with 95 yards in the first half. Four receivers out there for the Eagles. Four man front for the herd. Quick play, throw. Tackled at the 31. That's Dalen Cobb, another freshman receiver for the Eagles. This could be a moment where these other freshman receivers have to step up. The main target for Van Trees has been the other freshman, Marcus Sanders. Well, you got to be able to feed these freshmen, find ways to get them the ball. They're, they're going to be the playmakers of the future, so you might as well go ahead and get them the reps, give them an the opportunity to shine. And this run game has been so good so far for Georgia Southern. I fully expect to see more of these play-action passes. RPO start to show in effect. Six-yard gain for Cobb after the catch. Second and four, Van Trees. Throwing near side, has Singleton at the 45. First down for Georgia Southern. Good job by Singleton finding the way to get open out there. 
Looks like it was a deep curl, maybe. Found a way to get the first down. Chains are moving. Game 17. Van Trees faking the screen to Singleton. Will go to him across midfield. And Singleton out at the 45. See Georgia Southern fast tempo already. They're having success running their plays. So can he keep the, that tempo offense moving? Three receivers on the left, second and two from the 44. In herd territory, Singleton screen pass again, and that time Stephen Gilmore there in a hurry. But Cole, what's been your take on the urgency from the Eagles throwing the ball? I think they realize that they can't just win the game on the ground. Yes, they've had success there, and they're going to make Marshall respect that. But when they're having success throwing the ball, it's going to help open up the playbook a little bit. And then when they decide to run the football, you're going to see some big gains that can happen on the ground. Singleton got enough for a first down. Ball placed at the 40. Cobb in motion. Play action. Van Trees finds Cobb. Cobb's going to go deep to the end zone. Incomplete. Was looking for Sanders on the freshman, the freshman connection. Tell you what, Micah Abraham, uh, really good coverage right there. Wasn't fooled by the, the trick play. Stayed right there in coverage on Sanders and really good by keeping, preventing Sanders from having a touchdown. There have been times where offensive coordinator Brian Ellis likes to open the playbook up. That time unsuccessful. When you're in this stretch where you're, you're fighting for bowl eligibility, you might as well empty out the playbook a little bit. Put in motion on second down. Van Trees, pressure come in, throws it out quickly. Elijah Alston read that play well, giving Van Trees some trouble. Sure did. Really good pressure, prevented a completion from happening, and Van Trees would have been able to kind of just flow out more to the right and be able to find his receiver in space. But, hey, you saw it. So Coach Helton spoke with EG about trying to have some third down completions. The Eagles were 0-6 on third downs in the first half. Third and 10. Compared to Marshall, who's been 50% completion on third. Empty backfield. Here comes the blitz. Van Trees was looking for Singleton. Fourth and 10. Pressure got there a little bit too quick. You want to see those offensive linemen hold that those blocks maybe a tad, maybe a second longer. That way it kind of helps slows up that defense, gives Van Trees a second to get the ball out, and looks like they're going to stay on the field. At this point, why not? Fourth and 10 from the 40. The Eagles 52% completion on fourth downs. Four receivers set with Jalen White, the running back. Five man front from the herd. Play clock at one. And they're not going to get out the playoff in time. Van Trees knows that's on him. You saw him just tap his, his number. Not exactly what you want to do. Understand they want to go for fourth down. And honestly, maybe for the best for, for Georgia Southern in the long run to go ahead and just punt the ball. You don't want to give Marshall a short field, especially throw an incompletion. And then next thing you know, Marshall's practically close to your 50 yard line. You don't want to make this an easier game for the thundering herd. Beck has averaged almost 40 yards a punt. Sends that one from the opposing 45. Drops that to 20 and caught at the 17. So we'll see Cam Fancher in the thundering herd offense back on field to start the second half after the break on ESPN+. on ESPN Plus, their own Emily Grace McWhorter got to speak with Marshall head coach Charles Huff before the second half started. Yeah, Danny, I got a quick moment with him before they took the field, and I asked him what the message was to his team after that Georgia Southern momentum shift, and he said they have to get back to basics. He emphasized this multiple times, specifically saying tackle well, finish plays, and do your job. Back to you. Thanks, E.G. Let's see how the thundering herd will answer with their first drive of the second half, starting from their own 17. Dan 
Manchin with the hard count. Throws to the outside, has a man, and gets a first down. E.J. Horton, who had the big touchdown catch to start their first drive in the first half on the completion. You can see that RPO action. You know Georgia Southern's defense are looking for the run game to happen, and then Marshall's did a great job establishing the run game early and so in this game that they got to fear it, and they're playing a little bit hesitant. Manchin hit as he throws, was looking for Horton again, hit in the blind side by Waylon Free. Bancher has been really good in the first half. Now 12 of 19, 219 yards. Trying to remain consistent in the second. Montgomery in motion. Hand off to Laburn. And Laburn to cross the 44 first down. We haven't seen much of Laburn throughout the night. That's his eighth carry, but it's a big one. It was a big one. I mean, Laburn, again, we talked about how special these running backs are at Marshall and how strong and effective they are and how they create just really mismatches against defenses just because of how physical they are. and. These running backs are running through linebackers like sheet wall. Can't forget about Rasheen Ali making his return. Really, he has, really he talented has carries. Back. Yeah. yeah. Nine carries, rather. Play action. Pantcher throws, was looking for Ahmed. Good defense by Seth Roberson. See, they went back to the RPO action right there. Pantcher checked to see what his read was, and he said, all right, it's not going to be there in the run game. I'm going to just toss it up. See if Ahmed is going to make a play for me. And then, I mean, honestly, just good coverage. I think the ball maybe was just, I don't think the ball could have been much better. But still, solid coverage. Here we go, second down. What he said, Cole, if the ball hits your hands, you have to make the catch. But Robertson there on the coverage did a great job. He did. Second and 10 from the 42. Here's Ali. And he breaks through tackles across midfield. And when you have that one-two punch of Ali and Labor, it makes it really hard for the Eagles to stop the running game. I mean, it's kind of like watching a boxing fight. I mean, you got a really good boxer, and he's throwing you some pretty good jabs, and then next thing you know, you get that hook. I mean, you better check your jaw, because if that makes, that makes contact, you may be KO'd. And that's exactly what's happening with Georgia Southern's run defense. They just have not been able to recover. 19 first downs for the herd in Eagles territory from the 43. Bancher going deep, caught to Harrison, but it's out of the hands of the last second, so an incompletion. Robertson and Free there on the coverage. Well, he had a chance to catch the ball, Harrison. I mean, you got to be able to make that catch. I tell you, like I said, hit him in the hands. <laughs> Adam, he had the ball he in his it. hands. Look at that. Come on. You got to make it. The, you got to complete that. Well, you had free at the last second coming oh, no. in to break that up. No, no. Look, <laughs> you're coming down. You complete that catch, all right? You come down. You hit the turf. You secure the ball. You make a great point. So an incompletion, second and 10. Man in motion is Montgomery. Dancer rolling left. Fires downfield. Incomplete. Looking for Brian Robinson, third and 10. So you can see one of the adjustments that Georgia Southern's defense made. They put a guy out there as a spy. That way they can kind of monitor Fancher. If he decides to t bring the ball down and run with it, they're trying to eliminate that threat to be able to con help contain that running game just a little bit more to make their lives a little bit easier and make Fancher make some plays either in the air or hand it off. Third and 10, Fancher throws, it's caught. First down inside the 30. And Robinson that time making the catch. Heck of a catch, it looks like somebody almost got a hand on it to just bat it down and get a uh, pass deflection. We're looking at the replay here, almost had it. Trips up, kind of loses, loses where the ball is at, but still comes in, makes the tackle. But Marshall's just moving the ball at will. 15-yard pass from Fancher to Robinson, first and 10 from the 28. 
Marshall, 6 of 11 on third down conversions compared to the Eagles, 0 for 7. Play clock at 5. Fancher hands off to Ali. Stopped at the 22. Six, second down. Fancer, plenty of time. Scrambles and throws short. He was looking for Caleb McMillan. And one thing about this Georgia Southern defense, they're going to bring pressure. Their coverage has to be on lock. You can't let receivers get open. You got to flush Fancher out, be able to force him to throw some incompletions. Right now, this Southern defense, they haven't forced a turnover yet all game. And that's something that they got to be better at if they want to get back into it. Right now, Marshall's in a position to kick a field goal if they wanted to. Third and four. The Eagles showing pressure. See Jackson and Watson Trent rushing up the middle. Play clock at two. Fancher gets it off in time. Hand off. First down and then some for Kalen Labor. Puts the herd in the red zone. This Georgia Southern defense is on their heels. It's really hard, and that should have, I mean, you're gonna show pressure earlier. I think you should have went ahead and just did it. Because right there you see the linebackers, they froze up a little bit. They didn't really come down and try to run that bullets crossing blitz that they had showed initially. Had they been able to do that, I think they may have slowed up laboring on that and been able to make a play on them. Just shows how the herd offense has executed tonight. Over 400 yards of offense. First and 10 from the 11. Fancher, quick fire, Montgomery. Tried to break out of the tackle by Canteen. It's a great job on the outside. Redshirt junior Derek Canteen wearing the number zero jersey this week. Given to the most selfless player on the team throughout practice. Way to make a tackle right there, too. I mean, it, it, look, if, you, if one guy misses that tackle, he's going to be in the end zone. Second down from the eight. The 13th play of the drive. Fancher, quarterback keep, and tackled by Parker Devine. Brings up third, and go, third down for the herd. Good job by Parker Devine getting off of a block. Making the tackle right there. I mean, that, that's something they have to be better at in a run game. Georgia Southern has not done a great job of getting off of these blocks and making some plays, making these tackles, and that's something they got to continue to do better as the game goes along. No gain on the key from Fancher. Third and seven from the eight. Play number 14 of this herd drive. Play clock at two. Fancher throws. Touchdown. Stacy Marshall in the back of the end zone. Offense number 52. 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay third down. But it's sent back, holding on the left tackle, Ethan Driscoll. Get bailed out a little bit there. Can't, I mean, you're, you're, look, you're in man-on-man -man coverage right here. I mean, I understand it's hard to, to necessarily stop a guy from running free on the routes, but you got to be able to find ways to, if you're going to be playing out of phase, you got to come back in there and make a play on the ball. And honestly, you know, Southern got bailed out a little bit on that holding call. So now it's third and 17 from the 18-yard line. Four receivers for Fancher. Back to pass, throws, incomplete. So the Eagles caught a break, and we'll see if the herd will go for a field goal here. I would assume they are, they're going to kick this thing. Haven't seen the field goal unit yet tonight. 
Reese Vierhoff missed that BAT after the first touchdown for the herd. This is going to be a 35-yard field goal try. A little bit of a chip shot almost. A little bit further out. Vierhoff didn't take any kicks last week against App State. Got it. 15 play drive capped off the 35 yard field goal makes it 23 to 10 and Marshall 740 to play in the third Eagles get the ball after the break on ESPN plus Team play drive for Marshall taking 523 off the clock makes it 23 to 10 over Georgia Southern on ESPN plus 740 to go in a third quarter on this cold Statesboro night currently 49 degrees in Statesboro Georgia well I gotta imagine it's probably a lot colder in West Virginia right now I'll tell you that West Virginia yeah West yes, Virginia. just make it short yeah, yeah, yeah Huntington yeah. West Virginia yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's currently uh Trying to get the temperature in Huntington. It's 36 degrees. It's a low of 20. What's the coldest you ever played football in your career, Herman? Yeah, not that cold. Uh, I'm gonna go with maybe about 40, about 49, 50. When we went traveled up to uh, Virginia Military Institute, VMI. You don't know the struggle. No, I don't know the struggle. I don't. I don't want to know the struggle. <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't want to know it. I got you. Well, let's see how the Eagles come back out. Second drive in the second half. We mentioned how Coach Helton said it was going to be a battle between the coordinators more so. We've kind of seen that. And we're keeping score. Technically, Clint Trickett's up on Will Harris right now. Yeah, you, you can see the difference in, you know, play calling and experience that comes comes about, you know, and throughout this game. Defense coordinator Will Harris in his first year as a, D, as a DC. You can see he's learning on the fly. He's fixing some things, but they're still struggling. Oh, the ball is out. Singleton couldn't hang on. Is that going to be a turnover? Isaiah Gibson comes up with the football. The ruling on the field is a catch and then a fumble recovered by the defense. Oh, no. First and 10, Marshall. Wow. First play. For Georgia Southern, Jeremy Singleton couldn't keep the football. Oh, that, I see that elbow was down maybe, but still, you got to hold on to the football. You can't just put – oh, man, you can't put the ball on the ground. Oh, man. You just can't do that. when you're Especially you're trying to fight to come back in the football game. You can't have mistakes like that. That's what kills – Well, the Eagles have to hope that it gets reversed – as the officials will review the play. You're taking a look at the replay now on your screen. Looks like that right elbow may have been down, but still. We already saw one fumble from Kyle Van Trees, was trying to get the ball back on play action, trying to get it back from Jalen White, lost it. And now, if this counts, if this stands, you're going to have the herd near the red zone after getting a field goal, they have a chance for a touchdown. Tell you what, that would be the worst case scenario for Georgia Southern. They found a way to turn a turnover into seven points and put you down 20 points. We thought that missing that extra point was going to come back and maybe fight Marshall because Georgia Southern got some life in their offense. But we haven't seen any. We haven't seen that that life that they start they started to have in the second quarter. It hasn't came back, and right now they're just making mistake after mistake. So look at Singleton's legs. As he goes down, the ball comes out. And remember, the last time the Eagles turned the ball over, the herd would score. So Marshall already with points off of turnovers on the Eagles. Yeah. Ugh. It's going to be a interesting situation but you talk about how well this Marshall defense has played so far in this game and how well they've played so far this season they, they're, they've been tremendous in a lot of different spots throughout the year and it, it's just been 
really interesting to watch this defense make plays and be really good on third down. Looks like they're about to make a decision here. Down by Rue, that makes the receiver down. The ball will be placed at the 19-yard line, second and 16. The Eagles catching another break. Definitely did, because that would have been very, very bad. And I'm not talking just, just regular bad. That would have been like maybe Michael Jackson type bad. You know, just a little, little bit of that action bad. But really good Michael that the officials Jackson were bad. able to see, were able to catch it. You know, Michael Jackson bad. You know, you know, you know the, the song. Yeah, yeah. Well, the other day, the 40th anniversary of Thriller. Listen to that album and the additional cuts that they released. Always great. Did you sing the song? Of course I did. Okay, just making sure. So Van Trees on first down, throws, has a white. Rather second down, White still on his feet, gets the first down. Across the 40. And White slow to get up. He took a big shot. He took a big shot. Got up on his own power. Something that Eagle fans do not want to see. Yeah, you can't keep having guys get injured and you know, you're know you losing valuable players that are very key to the offense. And we already talked about what they're missing on in that wide receiver group. And if you lose Jalen White today, we know Gerald Green's not available today, but you lose Jalen White in a tough situation. God has been a workhorse this whole game. 13 carries, 143 yards. So now O.J. Arnold going to be the primary running back on this drive. So first down for the Eagles after the 22-yard pass from Van Trees to White. Arnold will get the handoff up the middle, and that may have been a first down saving tackle from the herd. Marshall played it in cover one right there. Saw a lot of man matchups. George Sutton did a great job taking advantage of that. After a gain of five. From the 46. Van Trees rolling right, pressure, throws, incomplete. Elijah Alston was chasing and trees, no intentional grounding, make it third and five. Well, like Can I said, the Eagles get a first down conversion here, Cole? Uh, they haven't converted yet all yeah. game, so uh, I'm not going to lie. It doesn't look very good, but hey, anything can happen. You got to keep the hope, right? Still plenty of time to go, but Georgia Southern 0 of 7 on third downs. The herd have done a tremendous job limiting the Eagles. Third and five. Van Trees is set. Abraham Boplan. And it's fourth down. That's not something you typically see from this offensive line unit. They don't usually get beat. It looks like some miscommunication. Langmeyer to center. He didn't, get in, he didn't help out the running back. I understand he was probably sliding away from it, but he probably should have just put up a hand to kind of help that running back out, O.J. Arnold. That way he could have came up and made a block and maybe helped Van Trees. Figure something out instead of taking that sack. That is Bo Plan's first sack on the year, and it's a big one. Anthony Beck's punt takes a bounce inside the 30. Gonna get down to the 24, maybe the 23. And that's where Marshall will start back on offense when we come back from break. 23 to 10, thundering herd over the Eagles. 5.39 to play in the third quarter. Eagles quarterback Kyle Van Trees has been heavily protected throughout the season. You see the numbers from the Eagles O-line protecting Van Trees, but that was the sixth time he got sacked on the sack from Abraham Boplan. I mean, yeah, you hate to see a sack being given up, but at the same time, credit this Eagles offensive line. I mean, they've been playing good all season. A lot of pass attempts, and again, I think Langemeyer might have should have probably threw that arm up to kind of help slow down that rusher for O.J. Arnold to come in and make a block. 
First and 10 from the 23, quick pass from Fancher on the outside to Shadid Ahmed. Ahmed with his third reception on the night, making second and four. Under five and a half to play in the third quarter. Watson Trent showing blitz for the Eagles. And the Eagles send six. Fancher rolling left, throws, has a man pushed out at the end. Charles Montgomery on the catch for a first down. Like I said before, if you're going to blitz, you're going to put yourself in man coverage, and you got to play it well. You basically should pretty much be in phase with these receivers if you're going to be blitzing. You're going to be played in man coverage. you got to be in phase. Fancher quick throw again, overthrows Horton. Haven't seen many mishaps from the redshirt freshman throughout the night. No, he's been playing phenomenal. I mean, not just throwing the football, but using his legs as well. I think he's been a, real, a really dangerous weapon. He's true dual threat, meaning um, in, his, in his type of quarterback play. I mean, he, he's been playing a pretty good game. It seems like the herd may have a starter for a few years to come. Good to have your future somewhat secured in that position. Second and 10, play clock at seven. From the 41, Banter finds Horton, and Horton couldn't hang on. That tipped off the hands. Got to catch it, right, Cole? Yeah, definitely, no matter what. <laughs> no matter what. I don't care if, a, if your fingernail touches it. Fingernail needs to bring it in. I don't care. But, yeah, ball was a little bit too high, though, for Horton. You want to see Pantra make some of these throws a little bit easier for his receivers. You don't want to push yourself in a position where it's third and long. you got to sit back and make a play happen. But we know how dangerous Fancher can be with his legs. Third and ten. Fancher lets it go quickly. Ooh. Big hit from the Eagles, Anthony Wilson. And that's going to bring up fourth down. But a player down, Wilson. Oh, no. I mean, you saw this. So you see the stunt right there. Way to come up and make a, a tackle right there. And oh, maybe cramped up in his hamstring, maybe. I, mean, I don't want to speculate too much, but hopefully it's just a cramp. It's like they're trying to shake it out. Anthony Wilson, the red shirt junior from Columbia, South Carolina. He's getting stretched out on the field, so it could, could likely be a cramp, hopefully. Hopefully it's a cramp. It's definitely best case scenario. Just need to stretch him out. Get that blood flowing a little bit. Get him up on his feet. Yep, it's going to feel a little stiff for a little bit, but he's walking on his own power and he's jogging. So, yeah, I'm going to go with a cramp. You no, know, we always talk about cramping in the heat, but we never really talk about how players can cramp up in the cold. Cole, have you ever dealt with that as a player? Uh, not really, because, look, I'm not going to lie. I drink a lot of water, so, you know, I'm, I'm going to stay good. But <laughs> I've seen a lot of guys go down for cramping in the water. A lot of people can underestimate, just because it's cold outside, that they think their bodies won't cramp up. But really, your body is going to – it needs to stay warm. If it's not warm, the water and everything, I'm not going to lie. It doesn't sound great coming out of my mouth. But I know it's something weird with the science for it. Oh, the weird formation on the punt by McConnell. Went out at the 20. Hood may have kept it in bounds before going out. And overall, a big stop by the Eagles defense. Much needed. Much need to stop as you said it, Danny. We gotta see this offense. They gotta get something clicking if they wanna come back in this game. Only down 13, they gotta figure something out and I think you go back to the run game. Well, here's the thing. You don't have Jalen White out there. So it's gonna be all on OJ Arnold. Hood's in motion on first down from the 21. And a quick catch from Hood, falling out to 24. 
and unfortunately, you can kind of see that injury bug just going through some key players on for Georgia Southern. I mean, guys are just getting nicked up, getting banged up, getting injured, getting hurt. A lot of key players that are very crucial for this offense to succeed. So now you got to really lean on these young guys to perform and make some plays. Alden in motion at the backfield for Van Therese. Quick fire to Sanders. It's going to be third and short. This is a third and manageable for the Eagles. They can convert. Definitely. And I think, honestly, me personally, I try to figure out some type of RPO here. Georgia Southern does have a tendency whenever they do run the RPO to kind of run that counter run to set it up. And next thing you know, you'll see one of these receivers open on a glance or really one of these slant routes. But we'll see if that happens. Third and three from the 28. Van Therese airing it out deep downfield for Hood, and it's intercepted. E.J. Jackson couldn't hang on at the last second, and he knows it. That would been great for the highlight reel, but, hey, you got to be at Look, ball hit him in the hands. You got to come down with it. It applies <laughs> not just to receivers, the DBs. When the ball hits you in the hands, you got to come down with it and make a play. And right there, he had the moment. Oh. Moment was a little bit too big in that at that point. So even DBs, ball hits the hands, you got to catch it. Yeah, man. And people say that you're playing defensive back is because you couldn't catch the ball as a receiver. I don't know if that's true. That's just what I've heard. But – you got to catch the ball no matter what. The ball hits you in the hands. A three and out from the Eagles. Bex punt. Going to bounce at the 32. So the Eagles defense made a great stop. But once again, Georgia Southern couldn't convert on third downs. Now 0 of 9 on the night. It's really kind of crazy to think about what's going on with this Georgia Southern offense on third down efficiency. And when you look at it earlier in the season, they were a top 10, they're a top five team in third down conversions and they've just kind of been going down and down as the season's going on and credit to the Sun Belt for having teams like, like Marshall, South Alabama and JMU who are really good on third down defense. So rather the ball will, Marshall will start from the 31. Play clock winding down. Fancher hand off to Ali, rather a quarterback keep. A flag is out. Could be a free play for the herd. I mean, the big battle tonight was going to be third downs. I mean, Georgia Southern's offense, the best on third downs in the conference, but Marshall, the best third down defense, not just in the conference, but in the nation. Also, defense number 42. In the neutral zone at the snap. Five yard penalty remains first down. And the offsides on Dylan Springer, the six year senior for Georgia Southern. Like you said, Dan, it's been an uphill battle for Georgia Southern. There's a lot of injuries, and just like sometimes the offense production has lacked some. And, you know, again, that's cut more like because of injuries. So first and five, Ali getting some help from his old lineman, the center, Logan Osborne, trying to. Carry Otley for some extra yards, get to first down. In most cases, you say push the pile, but he was just pulling the guy. Around. You ever done that? You ever tried to carry a running back like that as old lineman? I actually did that one time. I played Virginia Tech when I was at Furman, and we were scoring. We're on the goal line. We're getting ready to score. I pulled. I believe it was Devin Wynn pulled him in into the end zone. We scored a touchdown. Went up early on VT. Good times. I'm gonna go back and watch that game, find that footage, and see if you're telling the truth. I don't cap like that, Danny. Okay. I don't cap. All right. It's not in my game. <laughs> From the 42 on first down, Fancher will keep, rolls out of bounds. You keep it 100 at all times, don't you, Cole? That's all I know, Danny. Hey, look, I'm a South Side Atlanta baby. Look, that's all I know is keeping it 100. In the words of Drake, you've been keeping it eight more than 92 with 100. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Inside two minutes to go in the third. Just a one-yard game gain off the quarterback keep from Fancher. Marshall, 442 yards of offense through three quarters. Itching for more. Ali bounces outside. 
Makes a man miss. Gets across midfield. However, a few yards short of a first down. Going to bring up third and short. Got to make a tackle when you had a chance. And right there, that could have been a little bit more of a keeping Ali to a shorter gain. You got to make a tackle out there in space. But instead, Ali, being the great running back that he is, makes a guy miss on an arm tackle and makes it a thir very third and short. Third and two from midfield. Fancher keeps. Tackled by Springer. That's a big third down stop for the Eagles. Great job by that Eagle defense. Got penetration. Looks like it was a quarterback stretch. Eagles get penetration. They penetrate the gaps, get back there, and able to make a play on Fancher, who, again, has been extremely dangerous with his feet. So the herd will punt. We haven't really seen any big returns from Caleb Hood. The Hood's been everywhere out there for the Eagles. That's why he's nicknamed Mr. Consistency. Called a fair catch, but that's a great herd bounce. And that's going to pit Georgia Southern inside the five. It's a long way to go. About 97 yards, you're going to have to get down the field. And 14 seconds left, so you're going to go into the fourth quarter unless you have a one-hitter quitter here. But, again, this is, this is going to be a test of this Southern offense. And here's the thing, Georgia Southern's down but not out. It's only a two-touchdown game. There's one thing about this game that I, I thoroughly love is that even when things look hopeless sometimes, you can find a way to claw your way back into it. You're just, you're never out. You're never really out until the clock hits zero. So the Eagles will start from their own three. This could be the final play of the third quarter. Hand off to Arnold, he gets stuffed. Owen Porter has been the leader up front for this herd defensive line, and that's gonna take us to the fourth. 23 to 10, Marshall over Georgia Southern. The Eagles down, but not out. Bowl eligibility on the line. Fourth quarter coming up after the break on ESPN+. Plus. This was the last time the Eagles and the Thundering Herd faced off in, on the gridiron 22 years ago, September 21st, 1996, and Marshall got the last laugh, a 29-13 win over Georgia Southern. They've won the last four games against the Eagles. Can they make it five as the fourth quarter begins on ESPN Plus? It's second and 10 from the three for the Eagles. Van Trees, quick throw as Singleton Singleton trying to wrap around for a first down may be short. Our own Emily Grace McWhorter has an injury update on the Eagles' Jalen White. Great game. Brandi Klaus, head athletic trainer, told me that Jalen will be out for the remainder of this game with a knee injury. Back to you. Thanks, CG. So, no Jalen White. He didn't have Jill Green to start tonight. So, now it's all on O.J. Arnold, and we may see a bit of A.J. Brown for the Eagles. It's third and one. Can the Eagles get their first third down conversion tonight? We'll see. Pistol formation. Play action outside. Good block. Darius Lewis with a first down and then some. And the Eagles have done it. Their first third down completion on the night. That's got to be a big one in the fourth quarter, Cole. That was a huge one. And you know what? I want to talk about number 56, Brian Miller, the left tackle. Got out there in space and made a pancake block that helped get the first down. I mean, just a vicious block. Got the guy on the ground. I think his helmet came off, too. The 20-yard game from Darius Lewis. Trips right for the Eagles from the 32. Dump out to Arnold. Arnold gets to the 40. Offense starting to pick back up for Georgia Southern. Hey, look, you gotta have a, you gotta have some sense of urgency. We saw Coach Helton get his guys riled up, got them fired up, gave them great motivational speech. Probably with some words we can't repeat, but that's fine though. He got them fired up. 
And right now, we see this urgency is picking up for the Georgia Southern offense, and they're moving the ball. Second and two from the 40. Van Trees play action. Floats one up for Singleton. Couldn't hang on. Joshua Bowers on the coverage for Marshall. And kudos to Joshua Bowers, too. So in that coverage right there, he knows he's man on man. He uses the sideline as a second defender, technically, to kind of help him out. That way, all he has to do is just get his hand up, make a play on the ball, and force the incompletion. You saw what just happened there. It was an incompletion. Here it is, third and short. Third and two. And the Eagles keep the momentum going. Van Trees in the quarterback. Keep gets a first down. Drive continues. Like we said, Cole, the Eagles are down but not out. Let's see if Coach Helton's speech in between the quarters provides a spark. Well, one thing you can always say about a good football team, they don't give up no matter what's going on. They always keep fighting. And Georgia Southern, yes, they, do they have injuries? Yes, they have a lot of injuries, but they're fighting. They're, they're not giving up. And that's what you got to have in a quarterback that wants to keep fighting, won't give up, and we'll put the game on his back if he needs to. Van Trees is going to throw. Rolling right. Has Singleton. Across midfield, taken down at the 41. Check that, make it the 42. Big first down catch. Look at this. It's a really good protection. Van Trees says, all right, let me roll out. Let's see if somebody's going to run with me. Finds Singleton running with him, makes a big play. However, Van Trees sacked on first down. Owen Porter from behind. That's the second time Van Trees has been taken down tonight. Well, you know what? They call Owen Porter the moose, okay? I don't know why they do that, but, man, you can tell he's strong as an ox, all right? Maybe strong as a moose. We're just going to say that. <laughs> why would you say – if his nickname is the moose, why would you say he's as strong as an ox? Because I was thinking about an ox for some reason. But still, the moose, all right? He comes in, makes a great <laughs> sag. Now, Georgia Southern's offensive line is now tied with everybody else in sacks allowed. Second and 16. Arnold, the key. Arnold breaks through. Arnold, first down. Look, Arnold don't have Jalen White anymore. And really good right here. So you see the little skip pull. Gets the running back going. Here you go. See Arnold bumbling and stumbling. Gets a big first down gain right here. Keeps the chains fresh. First and 10. Get a 21 for Arnold. Eagles at the 26. Plenty of time for Van Trees to the end zone. Looking for Sanders. Incomplete. Broken up by Stephen Gilmore. It's going to be tough to win on those one-on-one -on -one matchups. Right there, you saw the safety kind of leak in there too as well to give a little bit of help to Gilmore. But still, really great coverage right there. The young freshman couldn't make a play and score a touchdown there. We'll see what Georgia Southern is going to cook up to get the chains going or at least pick up some yards to make it very manageable. Second and 10. Empty backfield for Van Trees. Towards the middle, intercepted. Bobbled into the hands of Eli Neal. And just like that, the momentum is stopped. Eli Neal with his first interception on the season. But a flag is out. Looks like there's two flags out there. I see one there. I think there's another one by another official around about the 30 yard line. On the field is the interception by the defense. After the play, personal foul on the intercepting team, number 55. 15 yards from the end of the run, first and 10, Marshall. So the Moose, Owen Porter on the penalty, but it's still an interception for the herd. Marshall gets the football back with 10.49 in the fourth when we come back on ESPN+. Plus. Moving downfield, but Van Trees had a great pass across the middle. 
and this guy bobbled and picked. Uh, hit him, kind of really hit him in the shoulder pad, maybe went right through his hands, and again, that's a good heads up play by Marshall's defense to come in, and Neal makes a play on it, gets an interception. And right now you see that moment was gone, then you have that personal foul that the Moose gets, you gotta rein him back in. He, he's ready to cut loose. <laughs> Got to bring the moose back in. The moose is on the loose. Hey. So that puts the herd back at the 15 to start the drive after the interception. Fancher handoff to Labor. Mm -hmm. Marquez, Watson, Trent on the tackle. How does that shift things in this game, Cole? Right now, so you got 10 minutes and less than 35 seconds now left in this game all right we know what marshall's going to do they're going to keep the ball on the ground they that's what they're pretty good at doing is running the football but really story's been really on cam fancher has been having such great success throwing the ball too so i expect to see the ball on the ground laboring on the carry still on the ground and may have enough for a first down tackled at the 25. Forward progress will give him the first. That's a grown man running the football right there. You can see it. I mean, talk about how well or how good this running back room is. Coach Huff, all right, he's been able to find talented running backs, right? Coach Saquon Barkley at Penn State, Coach Najee Harris, and Coach Brian Robinson Jr. These are guys who are starting running backs for NFL teams. So he knows talented running backs when he sees them, and he has a lot of them in his, in, on his team. From the 25, laboring again. May have gotten a yard. Well, that's the big thing for Marshall. I mean, when you add the fact that Rasheen Ali playing in his first game this season, so he is completely fresh, and you have Kalen Laboring, who leads the Sun Belt Conference in rushing yards this year, you have a unique one-two punch going out to the final stretch of the year. Well, we can't just, we can't forget about Cam Fancher. So really, it's kind of like a three-headed monster that you have back there in your backfield that can run with the rock. Ali in at running back after the gain of one. Fancher will keep and dump one off to Devin Miller. And Miller gets to the 45-yard line for a herd first down. And there you see the RPO action. They played off of the inside zone split because they knew that Georgia Southern was going to bite on it. Releases the tight end out, wide open. Fancher makes the, throws the ball, makes the play happen. And there you go, it's a first down already. Time is ticking, under nine minutes to play. And the herd, they're not wasting, they don't have the time, or they don't have, <laughs> excuse me, they don't have to rush, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, you can go a little bit of form in the offense here. Just go ahead and drain the clock out. That's, that's honestly the best thing that this offense can do. From the 45 on first down. Good patience. Ali, good patience indeed. Gets across midfield. One thing you're not seeing off screen is the, the physical battle with the DBs and receivers. Waylon Free getting tied up with Jaden Harrison. Look at this counter run right here. Brought the tight end over. And then Ali just gets just Makes guys just miss a little bit. Has great patience. Gets the first down. Just a talented group of running backs. Correction, that was Najee Thompson there on the outside. But another first down for the herd. Ali, that time Brandon Wilson got to him quickly. But at this point, all the herd have to do is run the clock out become bull eligible and head back home to West Virginia. Hey, anytime you can go home with a win, it's pretty good. It's a pretty great feeling. Now for Georgia Southern, things are not looking well. Numerous Nothing. injuries throughout this season and tonight. And the way things are looking, if Marshall holds on, next week's season finale against your longtime rival App State is going to be for bowl eligibility. Ready to get your water hot. That's going to be an entertaining football game. Fancher on the quarterback. Keith cuts his way back inside. Inside the 40. A little bit more pushing and shoving now with the offensive line and defensive line. You may be wondering, for those that are watching, 
Horse already had six wins. What are we talking about with them being bowl eligible with one more win? Well, only one of their wins against FCS teams will count. They face two FCS teams this season. So one of them won't count. They need this win tonight to go to a bowl game. And a flag on the play. All start. Offense, number two. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Third down. On a receiver, Jaden Harrison. So a third and five goes to third and ten. So you know this is going to be a passing down unless they decided just to run the football, continue to have trust in that their defense is going to get another stop because it's been it's been hard for Georgia Southern's offense to do anything against Marshall's defense. One more thing to put a pin on that. Marshall's two FCS wins. It was against Norfolk State to open the season and against Gardner-Webb back in back on October 1st. The third and 10, play clock at one. Timeout was called by Marshall. Timeout. So a timeout called by the herd. Six minutes to go in the fourth. We'll take a quick break on ESPN Plus. Six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Marshall leading 23 to 10 over Georgia Southern. It's gonna be third down and 10 from the 45. So far tonight, Marshall seven of 15 on third downs. Almost 500 yards of total offense from a thundering herd. Answer a hard count. Out of the Marshall timeout. Montgomery in motion. It's going to be a running back. It's a hold. Ethan Payne gets a first down. You said there was a hold, Cole, but no flags out on the field. Something as a old, former old lineman, you just notice those kind of things, don't you? Yeah, to be honest with you, Danny, it, everybody holds. Um, <laughs> uh, no, literally, everybody you holds. You spill the tea? <laughs> everybody, look, I can spill it now, but everybody holds. Look, offensive lineman, you're going, look, we hold a lot. Defense alignment will hold offensive linemen. I'm telling you, everybody holds, but it always gets missed. Oh, boy. Let's see what old lineman. DMs you on Twitter for sharing secrets. Hey, they're sharing secrets about Trent Williams giving away stuff in his stands. Laburn bounces out, nowhere to go. Anthony Wilson on the keep. On a cold night like this, you know, you got to wonder how some of the fans are trying to keep warm, whether it be hot chocolate or for some people in tailgating, it's got to be chilly. Give a shout out to Roger Edmond, the athletics facilities consultant. He cooks for the athletic staff. The, night, the day before every game day, he's made tremendous food across the season from, from chili to shepherd's pie and barbecue. What's shepherd's pie? Oh, you never had shepherd's pie? I ain't never had that. Well, you better look that up. I need to talk look, to Roger. Look, look it up over the break. We'll be right back on ESPN+. Plus. Back on ESPN Plus, 5.02 to go in the fourth. Cole, did you look up the recipe for Shepherd's Pie? I didn't look up the recipe, but, but you I, looked it up, though. I did look it up, and honestly, it looks pretty good. I need to talk to Roger after this. Get me a little slice of the pie. You need to come down to Statesboro a day early and enjoy some of Roger's cooking. He makes some delicious food every Friday before a game. I've done. Had some barbecue last night with some coleslaw, baked beans, a little bit of mac and cheese. Boy, I'm getting ready for Thanksgiving. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not a big fan of coleslaw. I just can't do it. I can't do it. Ooh, I can't that's do good. it. Okay, you I just know can't what? Do it. I just can't do it. I'm not going to disagree with you. I just can't. All coleslaw is not the same. That's it. Okay? That is the key. So you didn't have some bad coleslaw. That is true. I've had some bad coleslaw in my life. Out of the Eagles timeout, second and nine. Ali muscles his way through inside the 25. Going to be third and short. 
Ollie's a great runner. You see him lowering that shoulder, fighting for those extra yards. I feel like that's something, uh, that's a good trait really good running backs have. They know how to lower their shoulder and fight for extra yards. I feel like that's something that differentiates normal average quarter, not quarterback, excuse me, running backs from exceptional running backs. Approaching four and a half minutes to go in regulation. A touchdown here for the herd to close it out. Third and three from the 25. Dancher, ooh, making men miss, cutting back in, gets the first down. He put Dylan Springer on skates. I thought he was about to hit the split out there, but really good by Fancher, by faking out Springer, kind of coming back and then fighting for that first down. Like I said, we can tell, you can tell how talented this backfield is for Marshall, all right? Really talented quarterback that is extremely good with his feet, that can throw the ball, that's continuing to develop. Has a little hand and finger injury. Looks like he's trying to shake it off. Then you have Labor. Then you have Ali. I mean, this is a really talented group of runners that can really be something special down the line in future seasons coming up. First down from the 21. Up the middle is Labor. Tackled near the 15. The last game oh. for Marshall. Next week is against Georgia State, while Georgia Southern, in what's looking like a winner go home type of scenario. Timeout, Georgia Southern. This is their second timeout of the second half, 30 seconds. Please reset the, the Eagles game. Eagles play App State. We're being told that there was some action out there with Najee Thompson timeout. for Georgia Southern. I mean, emotions. Well, definitely high for the Eagles. We'll take another break. More to come on ESPN Plus. Back on ESPN Plus. Second and four from the 15 for Marshall. 3.23 to play in regulation out of the Eagles. Timeout. Georgia Southern with one timeout remaining. Marshall with two. Answer the hard count. Now the handoff, Laburn stopped by Kadri Jackson. Gonna bring up third down. It's been very back and forth in the second half, Cole. Only one field goal has been made. As the Eagles will call their final timeout. 316 back on the clock. The only score in the second half, Cole, was the field goal by Marshall in the third quarter. But here's a look at who's all bowl eligible in the Sun Belt Conference. Marshall with a win, they will be. You see Coastal Carolina with nine wins. They're already eligible for bowl game and trying to compete for a conference championship. In the West, just Troy and South Alabama. Yeah, I mean, you look at these teams, I mean, they fought hard this season, and they've been playing some really good football, so yes, they deserve to be where they are right now. And when you look at App State and Georgia Southern, both of those two teams, they need to get a win next week in order for them to be bowl eligible. So best believe this is going to be somewhat of the Super Bowl for both of these two teams. Same with potentially Southern Miss and Louisiana, both with five wins on the year. Going to make for some... Interesting regular season finale matchups out of the Eagles timeout third and short Laburn gets a first down well, In between that time Georgia Southern is gonna have to improve on that running deep that rushing defense That's been something that App State prides themselves on doing well This has been a lengthy drive for the herd 14 plays 77 yards 735 and counting on this drive. See Marshall taking their time, true four minute offense, just trying to run out that clock and get up out of here. More so eight minute offense on this drive. Oh, yeah. Time of possession continuing to go up. First and goal from the eight. 
Laburn squeezes in for about a yard. Laburn is 17th carry on the night. Correction. Uh, what's the 17th? The running game's been split up fairly evenly. Laburn, 17 carries. Rasheen Ali in his first game back, 16 carries. Cam Fancher, a couple of quarterback keeps. He has 13 carries for 68 yards and that rushing touchdown back in the first half. Yeah, so you, t you, you already know having a lead back is just something that's, that's very crucial for this offense to continue to flourish. Now they have a little bit more opportunity to be great. Now here they are. And play clock was winding down. Marshall using a timeout. And we're going to take one with them. A minute 53 to go. At the herd in the red zone. More when we come back on ESPN Plus. Back on ESPN Plus, a minute 53 to play. The herd's in the red zone, second and goal from the six. The herd have had the ball in this possession for almost nine minutes. And this will be their 16th play on the drive. Ethan Payne and a running back. He'll get it. Cuts through inside the five. Third and goal. It's right here. Just chew up about 30, about 30 seconds. And then next thing you know, you got to probably run one more play. And I don't know if Coach Huff's going to just kind of go for the the kill shot here and just going to score a touchdown or just trying to take some knees and run it out. But more than likely, I think he's going to go for the kill shot. I mean, with a drive like this, 16 plays, 81 yards, approaching nine and a half minutes, you better score a touchdown here for Marshall. Oh, yeah. I mean, no, no prisoners in war, right? <laughs> no prisoners. Payne still in a running back. Third and goal from the four. Payne stopped. Kieran Smith getting there in time. Bring up fourth and goal. Nonetheless, points on the board is the final nail in the coffin. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I don't know what they're going to do here because it's kind of a weird situation. You could go ahead and score the touchdown, or you could kick a field goal, or you could just, yeah, more than likely, just go ahead and score the touchdown. Well, the game clock and play clock are separated by about 17 seconds. Correction, 16 seconds. Yep. So if they and don't get this here, it's turnover on downs, but, I mean, there, there's not much you can do here. Well, the offense is still out there. Play clock at five. Fourth and goal from the five. Fancher going to keep and just going to fall down. Turnover on downs, but nonetheless, when you take over 10 minutes off the clock on the drive, that's all you want to do for Marshall. And just like that, the Thundering Herd are going bowling. Yep, and that's a job well done on that, on that drive, on that whole series right there. I mean, chew up 10 minutes of clock. Don't give Georgia Southern any type of time to get down the field, try to put up some points. I mean, Marshall just completely outplayed the Eagles on offense and defense tonight, and it just showed. The Herd will win their third game in a row while Georgia Southern losing their third game in a row. And that sets the stage for next Saturday in Paulson Stadium, the Saturday after Thanksgiving, final game of the regular season, Georgia Southern versus App State for bowl eligibility. And another thing too, Danny, this is a big rivalry game. So one, I, I expect things to be very hot and very tense. And I'm expecting the Georgia Southern team to come out here a little bit with more energy, more juice, and find a way to, to go bowling or put themselves in position to go bowling and give App State a heck of a fight. Well, that'll do it. Final score, Marshall 23, Georgia Southern 10. The Thundering Herd improved to 7-4 on the year. Georgia Southern dropped below 500 for the first time this season at 5-6. This was a physical battle from start to finish. Marshall with 529 yards of total offense. Georgia Southern 384 yards, but Cam Fancher 
17 for 32, 274 yards and two touchdowns. Also 14 carries for 63 yards and a touchdown. And how about the return of Rasheen Ali? 16 carries for 79 yards, helping the herd become bowl eligible. And our own Emily Grace McWhorter is standing by with Marshall head coach Charles Huff. You are now bowl eligible. What really got your point, your team to this point? Well, again, I think it started back in the summer, you know, with our culture and just fighting for each other. You know, we talked about it at the beginning of this month. Our seniors, this is this is the last month of football. I hope all of them get a chance to move on and play in the NFL, but it's not guaranteed. So we talked about maximizing every day in November, making sure it's a November to remember. And tonight was just a gritty, gutsy win on the road. And you got to be able to do that down the stretch in order to be successful. We saw a lot of production from Rasheen Ali. What can you say about him? I mean, the kids... <laughs> He's a tough kid, man. He, he's been, you know, battling to get back and itching and scratching to get back. Our medical team has done a good job with him. For him to come out today and, and, and battle, um, it just speaks to the, to the heart of our team. You know, and he's just one of the guys that battled today, you know, um, and it paid off. Paid off. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Go Herd. Final score, 23 to 10. Marshall's going bowling. Cam Fancher. 274 yards. Rasheen Ali in his first game of the year getting the job done with 79 yards on 16 carries. So that'll do it from Statesboro. For Cole Neely and Emily Grace McWhorter, I'm Danny Wall saying so long from Paulson Stadium when the final score is Marshall 23, Georgia Southern 10. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.